came to order. Bill said we're going to start be a little late, so reception of guests. We're missing guests today. Any agenda revisions? Yes, uh, I need to add to the action agenda and accept the resignation. It's not one that will alarm you. You know this is happening. We just okay. need to get it formalized. So 5.2 accept. Mm -hmm. Could I ask that uh, um, 3.3 3 board goals just be held until 4.3 executive committee? Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense, Bill. They, I think either roll, way you can talk about it. together. Yeah, I think you can either talk about it in there or... And we so, can add in some so, of the retreat pieces that go with that. So let's roll it into 4.3. Okay. So it's the same thing. Well, how about how about this? At other boards, they move 4.3 like right into the board goals discussion. So why don't we do okay. that? So yeah. 4.3 will be Maybe part of 3.3. Of 3.3. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can send you the email. That came out late last week. Anything else? public comments or correspondence <laughs> I didn't have public ones but board ones I just we don't need to talk about it but that data dialogue stuff I just was looking that came out the other day Bill's already seen it but uh, it's pertinent to stuff we've talked about so I just printed out copies for people to have it's about the performance gap between um, low, low, low financial low income and Free and reduced lunch and non-free and reduced lunch, except it's across the entire Northeast. So it's just for information. Anything else? Okay. Um, so for the agenda, to have a motion to approve. So I would make a motion to approve the minutes of April twenty-fourth, two thousand eighteen. All second. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Discussion agenda 3.1 Winter Student Learning Outcomes Monitor Report. I have it up here. If you have it in her, do you have it in her? You did yeah, get we it. Are, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so if you want to look up here, you can. I'll look up here. Um, so what we did is each of the principals were we were tasked with looking at three pieces of data: um, our reading data over from fall to winter, and I'll explain what that looks like. Um, math data and then some behavioral data so that is what I will share with you tonight. Um, first we'll kind of review what is MTSS which is multi-tiered systems of supports. Um, what does our student data tell us, our current state? Some successes, what has worked well? Um, maybe some areas for growth or investigate further and then support from the board. You've all seen this so it's not going to be any surprise to you. but. Um, so a multi-tiered system of uh, support or approach, um, what we call MTSS, is comprehensive and systematic process for assessing and maximizing the opportunities to learn for all students um, within any content area. These bullets are just the importance of it needs to be effective, culturally responsive, different first teaching, tier one, um, and effective early intervening supports looking at both academics and behavior. And then the components of Vermont's MTSS um, is that it's a systemic and comprehensive approach, effective collaboration, high quality instruction and interventions that's responsive and differentiated, um, comprehensive and balanced assessment system, and that, that the, t the people providing that have the expertise, right, that there's well-designed professional development. Any questions about all of that? We have we have a purpose statement at East Montpelier 
Um, when we created a number of years ago the tier two supports, we it's all this language, right? So those interventions must have these pieces. You can sit. If you want. I can see. So looking at our reading data, this so this um, looked at two pieces of data. It looked at the Fountas and Pinnell um, in the younger grades and the DRA2. So it was one assessment um, each child was given. In the fall, 43% of our students were proficient or proficient with distinction. That's levels three and four on the benchmark. And 57% of our students were not, which are levels one and two. Any questions about? So that's just one snapshot, one piece of data. So that's fall data? That is just our fall data. So if they're, so it's benchmark, what grades were they again? I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. It was grades one, and in the fall, kindergartners do not take this assessment. So it's grades one through six. Oh, okay. And it was using, do you still use two different ones, the DRA and the thoughts of the? Yeah. And are the benchmarks? the same throughout the school year? No, good point. So you're gonna see the next slide is gonna show the winter assessment and it's based on where they should be in the winter. So it's a different place. And this than is where based on where they should be in the fall? Yes. Okay. So looking at, and so this, this change in percentage is not exact because it's actually where they should have been in the fall and then where they should be at that so point. So the bar has moved forward. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, so, but what I think what you want to see, levels three and four showing a growth, right? A positive change. Levels one and two, numbers going down, which our reading data shows just that. So in the winter, 71% of our students were levels three or four, and 29% were still not. So what it was getting to on the fall assessment, so I'll just pick a grade, third grade. Mm -hmm. In the fall, they're actually being assessed on grade two. In the fall, they're being assessed at the beginning of grade three. Okay, but it's primarily what they've learned up through and very early into grade three, where the yes. winter assessment is half or more through grade three. So the winter assessment happens in January, so it's the first, it's most of the first semester. Yeah. The first you're semester. testing the learning of grade two in effect. In the, the fall. In the fall. But mm -hmm. your, the benchmarks are for that grade level mm -hmm. at that point in the year. Mm -hmm. The benchmark at the end of second and the beginning of third is at the same level? It is at ours. It, yes. But we see that summer slump. I was just going to talk to that. So a lot of what a lot of what happens in the fall, these uh, fall assessments are given in September, and with a lot of our students, we see that summer slide, um, where we all regress over the summer, right? <laughs> just to varying degrees, and it takes some kids. Unfortunately, it it takes some of our students who receive interventions all the way until January um, to get back to where they started. Not all, and that's not that. That's we don't like to see that, um, but it's rare to to find no slide. Children who read a lot in the summer, and children who who have summer services, we see less of the slide. Um, a typical child, you see them bounce back pretty quick. Like once they get into the groove, they're they're back and they're making progress. But all things to take into consideration. Then this shows a. Comparison, um, up at the top, you see the schools, we are school five, um, but this is a comparison of all the schools and then the SU data. And there, it's all percentages similar to the last slide. I'm, I'll show you a slide that kind of com gives a summary of where we're at in comparison with the SU. I, it wasn't in the package. Do we have, we must have, East Montpelier's year to year? So in other words, um, we know this, oh, is that a bad question? Oh my God. 
It restarted somehow. Oh, well, we got it in power. Okay. Here, I'll ask a long question. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, it's coming back now. To it's me, coming. it's 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 interesting to see how we compare to the other schools in the district, but I'm most interested in how we compare to ourselves. So we don't have the data. Time. The data is not stable enough yet to start okay. doing that for you and because we're changing we're changed, testing. We're too? changing testings and assessments. It's coming, yeah. Alicia. It's just it's flashing right now, mm -hmm. so it's going to take a minute to come back to project. Um, but yeah, okay. it, the problem, and that's, we'd like to have that longitudinal, it's just the time of setting up the system and we wanted to make sure the assessments were stable and we've been, um, some targets have changed. So then those percentages change and things like that. So. I can say we have more yeah. of that data in reading. It's been more stable over time. We've used the FMP and the DRA two for a few years at the, at the same benchmark okay. time. Math, we do not have that longitudinal. It's okay. I mean, I, this is very, to me, this is very good, very useful mm -hmm. data. So it's, it's um, something happened. Something happened with the bulb. Something yeah. happened with the bulb. I think one mm -hmm. will. Ellen is going to be thrilled tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on this? It's slide? coming back, right, though. It might just be uh, one more. Um, again, I'm, I, it's more comprehensive, but I mean, it. it because I had this to hand out today on the income gap, mm -hmm. it would be good to see broken down yeah. for East Montpelier by the income gap. Yeah. So one of the things we're, tra we're talking with, and this is where you need to talk to your school quality person, is the amount of data and the overwhelm. There's been a lot of talk in the school quality committee about how much the October was overwhelming. So we're taking a small snapshot here that we try to give you an annual full deep dive, but not that every time so we it's done it's done in house i mean these guys are analyzing I mean, alicia mm -hmm. was just showing me some data the, the level of analysis that she the team's doing around here i knew that we well i mean we're so from a business perspective mm -hmm. in a roi we're spending a lot of money on tier two mm -hmm. so for that investment i would expect to see what is that, that our gap that? is getting smaller right so I, it's in, it, whether it's in this presentation or with tier two stuff, um, I would be encouraged. I, I I strongly suspect we're influencing the mm -hmm. gap, mm -hmm. and it's not all in one right. area where we're making the improvement. Right. But so, I mean, we want to see that. Right. Yeah. But where I'm going to push back on Stephen is, and maybe this is a time we should park and lot. We should park and lot this discussion until we get to school quality because I'm going to talk about we need to be doing this across the schools the same. And I'll, I'll get into a lot more about that. Okay. We have some of that data that you presented in the October meeting that yes. showed how yes. it was like, was this like you saw data and we yes. saw that whole, the which, which we don't want to stop seeing. So, so yes. to me is that. But that's where, uh, the, let's. The, but hold on. So, so that is that. That relationship, I'm, I'm glad you know. I went to the U32 board meeting, and I'm glad to know that it's too light because I was totally guessing which school is, and <laughs> because we didn't say numbers, mm -hmm. and I was just hoping, but I, but I didn't know. It, but Bill is right. We've been talking about what, it, how much data mm -hmm. we we really want, but not just because of what you're saying, but also because we don't have time to then um, talk about it after. Like we're presenting with mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of data, but we don't mm -hmm. have the time. So we have also, we experimented ourselves, actually, in the state for the main, had to take main time with the program. Uh, he, um, we talked about maybe creating different, we haven't decided, but creating different groups within the board. So we're working across the boards in, in uh, you know, you focus on this, you focus on that, you focus on that, so that we can actually understand the data because one thing is just to be presented the data but then we are not telling them exactly what what it is so we're not doing a good job monitoring right because we just like we see the data and then we have very little time to understand it and disaggregate whatever whatever that is but we're meeting on Thursday so we'll know we'll know more mm -hmm. but I also hope that way you're saying you know like we all are going to be working at different levels because we are at different places 
at, at schools, but we're not going to put away someone in school to get another school to catch up, right? We're going to all keep we working may. together. We may. But, That's but why I'm saying you should there? have this discussion. You should have this. I'm pushing the SU work floor. I, and I want the SU work, but like in any team or any team sport, you don't put weights on your fastest so this is runner. What I'm saying. To, you, you use them as a team, right? To bring everybody, bring everybody up. You know, so that, but that's that's just my personal. Yeah. I'll wait till it's good quality. Okay. I hear I hear what you're asking for, so I, um, and do know that those are the conversations we have with our data teams when we talk about kids and we look at our data wall and we we do disaggregate that. And that's how we identify kids in need of whatever kinds of interventions. And we progress monitor. Are they make are we closing the gap? Are they making those the, the growth in each of these areas? I'm gonna talk a little bit when I get to the last slide about what's coming up with that. Um, but I'll keep going. So here's our math data. Um, and again, it's benchmarked, so this is where students should be at the beginning of each grade level. Um, no kindergarten in this data. This is all grades one through six using the STAR 360. Um, so 49% of our students in the fall were levels three or four, proficient or proficient with distinction on that benchmark assessment, and 51% were levels one and two, were not. And then looking again at winter, so this is a different benchmark um, than it was in the fall. But our 53% of our students were proficient or proficient with distinction. So they got reached over the 50% line, but not by very much. And 47% were not. And if you look at and the numbers are so small, but if you look at the change over time again, you hope to see pluses in the levels three and four, and the numbers decreasing in levels one and two, and it, it's kind of a little bit all over the place. Um, well, we have a lot of kids in level one, so getting from a level one to a level three is a long way to go. Mm -hmm. But one went down to less. Yeah, I, I'm not concerned about one of level four going down by one percent. Mm -hmm. I mean. If you've got if you've got two or three kids that are if you just got a couple kids that were right on the borderline in the fall, and it's just one little snapshot. It is one snapshot, but I think the important thing to note on this is that our growth is not the same as what we're seeing in reading. Right. That is my takeaway. Right. Okay. That's and that's been a consistent that's difference. Right. That's been a perennial struggle. Yes. So when you when you see that uh, the the fall uh, data before you are able to see the rest, what is, how do you, if it tells you that level one you're at 16% on a level two you're at 35%, how does that affect what you do? For the interventions? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's something Bill and I were talking about just a few minutes ago. Um, the good news is if you go back to the reading, um, lower percentages, right, of students who are at levels one and two, over the year that in math, our interventions are mostly happening in math right now across all grades. The struggle that we have, um, and this is, uh, I'll, it's kind of skipping ahead, but I'll talk about it right now. So what we have found with reteach interventions is we have 30 minutes a day, but if you have a child who's a level one or a two in reading and a level one or a two in math, and you have one block of time identified, it's really tricky to meet their need. It's kind of like, all right, half the year do they get one and the other half the year the other. How do you prioritize? It becomes really hard. So looking ahead to next year, and what made it especially hard this year is our two interventionists. The time that they had to provide interventions had been cut so much, which we looked at in the winter. Um, and you, like Stephen, were just talking about, you have, you have, we're increasing interventions next year as a result. Mm -hmm. So when we did the master schedule for next year, we have intervention blocks, but we also have push-in blocks. So that if a child struggles in both areas, which happens often, they it's not an either or, they're gonna get it in both areas. Mm -hmm. So they may get a push-in intervention during literacy and a reteach intervention during math or vice versa, but we can't, 
we've learned the hard way you can't pick and choose which is which is the priority math instruction or reading it needs to be both so that these kids can rise in both areas does that make sense yeah can you tell me what's the difference in between pushing and teaching so an interventionist would go into the classroom during the literacy block and might provide interventions during the class time Reteaches, they all go yeah, to their own space, and it's a block of time a day. And we found the benefits of that time, but we also know it's not enough for, for these kids. Core levels. Level one, most of those kids are on IEPs, right? It's really the level, it's those yellow kids, the kids who are tier two who need that. They're not significantly below, but they're below enough that they're not meeting the standard. And what math curriculum do you use? I should know that, shouldn't I? We are piloting, you, we don't. Oh, um, I kind of thought that, but I wasn't sure. So we're piloting three different programs next year. We have a cohort of six teachers from East Montpelier joining others across the supervisory union to pilot three different programs over the course of the year with the goal of identifying one. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I think my teachers are too. Um, I had a teacher representative, at least one from every grade level, ask to be on that pilot. Um, they didn't all get in, but six of them did. So again, we are school number five. Um, and this is just a comparison. Which I'll, talk, I'll give a, a bit of a summary in just a few minutes. Um, so the next few slides are around behavior. I, I shared um, behavior over this year and also behavior over the last three years because we haven't done this in a while, looked at behavioral data. Um, this is just from August through last week. Um, problem behaviors from least to greatest. The greatest problem behavior is disruption, which may not come as any surprise. Um, physical aggression and defiance being the next two. What's the difference between end disruption and disruption? Um, so there's a major. So there, there's um, disrupting class might be calling out, distracting others, getting up, sharpening your pencil, you know, getting others off task. A major disruption might be throwing a chair across the room. Okay. So what's the PAGG? Physical aggression. Physical. Thank you. And, and that. Major. That, is there a major physical address structure versus regular? No. Um, so physical aggression here means on the playground, you know, wrestling, not taking your hands off somebody, tackling somebody at football when you're, you know. Our rule, our school rule is kafuti, keep hands, feet, and other objects to yourself. Some of our children have a hard time with doing that. Um, it could be, could be kids aggressing towards adults, you know, kicking, hitting. And by time, again, you see the huge spike, that's lunch and recess. <laughs> and it, we know that it's our, um, during the school day, the least controlled environment. Um, and when most of the behaviors occur because you're mixing all kids from all different grades and all different classes. And then this is the three years data. Just looking at months, um, we have a few things to celebrate. Orange is this year, green was two years ago, blue was last year. You all know, because I let you know quite often, in the fall we had some really tricky kids um, that we were just learning, just meeting, trying to get a handle on, getting supports in place for, needing to hire personnel for. Huge spike in August and September, greater than in any other year. Um, October through March, April data is not all in, so it really isn't as good as it looks, but um, I think it's probably decent. But I, um, from October, at least through the end of March, we got a handle on the behaviors, supports are put in place for kids, and I, the celebration to me in this slide is that um, a significant decrease in behavior by month over the last three years. And are all those kids still here mm -hmm. and they're just 
support some plans. plans. So it might it might mean a tier two plan, a check in, check out behavior plan. It might mean personnel. Um, it might mean just a shift in expectations in classroom. It might mean Michael going in and coaching a teacher on how to set up the environment differently to, to meet kids' needs. Um, it's a whole slew of things. And then also looking at the last three years' worth of data, classroom, and there's a couple reasons for this, I think, but classroom, by and large, has the most. So this is all in office discipline referral sheets, ODR sheets. Classroom teachers fill them out. Not, and we talked about this actually last week at our staff meeting. Teachers were starting to complain that kids in the, were having hallway behaviors during lunch and recess. And I, ex I shared this with them last week at our staff meeting. And I said, so it doesn't look like it from our data. Mm -hmm. So that means teachers are not referring kids. When, if somebody's running in the hallway, we don't know about it, so we're not doing anything to fix it. So rather than complaining about it, fill out the form, let us address the behavior. Um, so we can get a handle on it. But by and large, and that's where that disruption comes from too. That's, the, that's our teachers are, are working on that in the classroom. So that might reflect my question then. If I looked two slides back for referrals by time, and, and you did say it was mostly lunch mm -hmm. and recess, mm -hmm. and then you look at referrals by location, mm -hmm. It was hard for me to square why yeah. classroom was so much higher than everywhere else. So it's because look, it's not, or is it just that there's so many classroom there's so opportunities? so many other times. So that's one hour of the day, which is the trickiest hour of okay. the day. But all those other times are classroom. Cumulatively, it just yes. kind of. So some successes, our scores are going up in both math and literacy over the course of the year. And Stephen, I know it doesn't tease out our, our tiered um, students and those who receive interventions, but looking at a snapshot of the whole school, we're moving in the right direction. Um, the increase, and again, it's benchmark, so these numbers are not exact, but we're making solid gains in reading, um, small gains in math. Well, I don't I mean, you're saying small gains, but there was a significant improvement mm -hmm. from level one to level two, too. So that's a gain. Yes. Whether They're still not, not where they where need, to, need be, to be, but it's still, a, it's still a gain. Um, that our students made the most growth of any school, looking at our reading data. Um, that's a, a celebration. And overall, our behavior data is getting better. The systems are working. Possible improvements, our math data is showing, as I said, we're not making the same progress. Um, and comparing our math data with the five other schools, we're kind of right in the middle. We didn't make the greatest growth, but we didn't make the least. Um, we're kind of we're, we're right in the middle. And looking at our behavioral data, we need to continue working on disruptive behaviors in the classroom. And then finally, board supports. Um, and this is just, I feel like what we have is working and we're constantly tweaking, like I talked about the interventions and the reteach block versus next year looking to do it differently and having um, more times for interventions, but just continued support around the coaching to increase teacher capacity, especially with tier one, and then continued support around tiers two and three for those who need it. Any final thoughts or questions? So this is really holistic. This is just school-wide snapshot. And I, so I heard from some of you that you appreciate more of the fall monitoring that has really a ton of data. How did, the, and this is new, we have not done this. How did this, do you feel like you have a, a picture? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I think. It is good when you can disaggregate it, but we could do that with SBAC data pretty easily when it comes in, mm -hmm. which is another snapshot um, to see yeah. in um, a, a different system, but right. it's going to give us reading and math, yeah. literacy and math. One thing that I was showing Bill just before we met, uh, or before we came in, 
So some of our aspect data is already here, which is exciting. Um, <laughs> and what you saw from this, the results from the STAR 360, um, there's something, there's a way to look at that that kind of projects how they think a student will do in the, in the SBAC. And so we did a comparison for those results that are in, and it is so closely aligned, which was exciting because it's not been in the past. Um, so I feel like that will, that will be helpful to us. All right, thank you. I'm glad thank this you. came back. I'm going to pass this around. I totally forgot. Okay. So, 3.2 board observations. Okay. Maybe I can start a little bit. I wish I had stayed last time. Uh, one main reason is for the kids. Yeah. Um, I think I could have given you a little more support that I hadn't communicated. Jen, I debriefed with Jen and Alicia afterwards. And there were questions about the form and the usage of it. Um, one of the things that's been found and I, um, is that most people are not using the form while the kids are performing. It's mm -hmm. taking time afterwards and really in silence mm -hmm. and filling it out afterwards. I think that was one of our reflections. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want it's real time. It's very hard to watch and right. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do it. And that's actually in a qualitative research or data gathering, that's totally allowable, is to say, I'm going to immerse myself in it, you're a participant, you do that, and then right afterwards you stop mm -hmm. and you write down what you can remember and, and put that down. It's, it's going to be a trend that mm -hmm. I think we could have given you some more pieces of that. But I thought one of the things that came back was, why does the board participate in observations? And that, that needs to be talked about. Why do you want to do that? Why do we want to? Why, why do you? Why do you want to do that? I mean, why, do, why is that? Imp is it important to you to do that for monitoring? Or is it important just to see what the kids do? I mean, that's what you need to decide. I'm not trying to say it's an or, as in an or, one's better than the other. But you need to decide what your purpose is of that. And I think that's a step missed in this. Uh, piece. Yeah, I think, I think we talked about it. Yeah. Reflections is that we didn't have a clear, we didn't have a clear idea of right. that question. Right. So, uh, on top of trying yeah. to do it real time, we found ourselves right. adrift because we and something were trying we, to do something that we didn't have a direct yeah. purpose right. for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the piece of just what we got into sidetrack during Alicia's. Why do you monitor? Mm -hmm. You need to be able to answer both of those questions. And to know to what depth monitoring needs to occur. So, I also think seeing something like that, it's almost like getting a finished piece in writing that's already been typed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the work that went into it, when you're putting down proficient or not proficient or whatever, we were watching them do a wonderful presentation. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not comfortable saying that they're proficient in whatever. We weren't, at, we weren't asking that. We were asking, did, they, did you see that they had a chance to learn in that area? Mm -hmm. Not whether they're proficient. It's, it, it, and Lindy, I think for you it might be the hardest because you're teaching every day and say, i got to take myself out of that teacher mode and stop assessing their performance level. And I, I just was not sure that's the role of the board. And that's a question for you guys to right. talk about. The role of the board, I mean, in my opinion, I love seeing what's going on in the schools because I don't get in here every day. My kids aren't here anymore. So that was their displays over there. All of that was very informative as to what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis in the school. But as far as a board observation type, mm -hmm. if I come for open house or something like that, just going around seeing what's going on is... Um, and if I have a concern, then maybe I'd bring it up, but I don't know. I just... So maybe the question is more, there's, there's, I think we all feel that there was value in that presentation. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, was it, was it a good opportunity for observation of the learning in the school, uh, of the opportunities for learning in the school? Um, and if I mean, and that sort of goes back to 
I'm a lay person. I have no window into education. Like I know more acronym soup than probably the average taxpayer does. But um, but I'm you know I'm not qualified to make I feel any sort of um, judgment of even. I'm not even comfortable necessarily with saying yes. The opportunity for this learning existed, um, and I think it sort of goes back to like we we give we hear feedback about what you guys need from the professional educator perspective, and we empower you to deliver education as professionals because we're not. Um, and so I think the last piece for us is. You know, sort of like the, the prove it. Like, and, I think that presentation. And I think this has way more value in terms of um, a data driven approach that says, you know, our education dollars. But, right, I mean, that sort of goes back to the fundamental question of, of monitoring, right? Where the, where the fiscal and, and really broad strokes stewards of what happens in the building. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have a clear answer. Um, right. I, other than I, I felt like that presentation had great value. I just don't know exactly how to quantify what that value was. I, yeah, I, I found the form difficult. Yeah, I, I definitely found the form difficult. What I found enjoyable is the broad, the broadness of the presentations, and that the kids found a subject matter that they could be passionate about and take it and run with it, which I think everyone learns better in an environment that they can be passionate about the subject. So I think from that's what was value, you know. Yeah, a little I also, bit yeah. more valuable to me than. I was, we talked a lot about. I wish I remember. I don't have my. I have the, the monitor stuff, but I don't have my notes of that meeting. But we did. I, I thought. I thought that what we had said is that what was valuable was that we were able to, uh, if a parent approached you on the street, like like we we actually had some connection with the kids. To me, I agree with you that we're supposed to monitor from further up, but the. The further away that we are from the success, or the or seeing the actual kids and not just the numbers, it's the so less of the story we have to tell. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the, we we're not to me we're not as connected. So I, I'm not as worried about like you know how qualified I am to say that it, because I, I'm not expecting this to be used to to monitor a teacher or to mm -hmm. say that a teacher is. It, it's more about the, in to me in the big picture. I, it was so amazing to see the energy. Mm -hmm how much time they could spend their the way to to speak to us, you know, not just to us, but to present themselves. Yeah. You know, and the use of technology and helping each other when the technology was not working. So so to see what we're learning today, but in actual, mm -hmm. you know, not in numbers but in pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, to me that was that was valuable. I think we did we all agreed that we needed a little bit more work as a as as a board in knowing this. But we've been talking also, and that's what we said, we've been talking so much about student learning outcomes, right? We, mm -hmm. we helped say what that was gonna be, we did all this work, and then this was like the perfect example. Like, I'm a learner of visual, like I can read all you want, but when somebody presents something, and like, oh yeah, that is totally a transferable skill. You know, like, yeah. it connects those yeah. student learning outcomes in a way that you can talk to a parent too. So we're not talking educational jargon, but. Right. This is what I meant, but it's just my take on it. So it was, you know, we don't need to do it every board meeting, but it's, to me, it's I agree. important. I, no, I, again, I think we all, I think we all see the value. Mm -hmm. I think what, what we're wrestling with is how to quantify what it is that we're looking for in these observations so that, uh, like, what I just heard you say is that, or maybe my interpretation of what you said, is that what we're looking for is a way to tell the story of what's going on in the building, right? And and that's different than trying to get some, some uh, data or some metrics, right? We're, we're not trying to measure specific metrics. 
necessarily, or maybe we are, but I think that's the conversation that, that the bill is looking for. Why do we participate in observations? And I would key off of that and say, what is it that we want as an outcome of an observation, right? So that we can give them, I, I mean, that's you that you no direction, right? But you did a brilliant job. Um, but Give it we, all to her. you know, but we're trying to hold ourselves to some standard that actually didn't didn't mesh well with what was being shown. Um, but I see so it as I, monitoring student learning outcomes. Is that what we're like trying to get a grasp on? Well, the, yeah, the, gra the one of the things you're going to struggle with for a while until you you. Do frankly, do do enough of it is mm -hmm. is to really know those student learning outcomes, yeah. and I think one of the best things that I can do to help board members is to be educated on what the student learning outcomes really are, mm -hmm. and then what's it look like when a kid's presenting on whether it's mm -hmm. below proficient or mm -hmm. proficient with distinction that whole gamut. You know, I'm not worried about you judging that, but just like like just the discussion you had right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, I. You know, you said, Flora, I saw the transferable skills once they were being presented. Now I can talk to those. Mm -hmm. That's the piece that I want every yeah. board member to be able to understand. Those posters up there are just not nice posters, but they're driving everything we're doing. And when someone asks me on the street that hasn't anything, but I hear you guys are talking about we're measuring the school by student learning outcomes, or I hear that proficiency-based learning, that stuff's terrible. <laughs> well, let me tell you what that actually looks like. You know, that's the story mm -hmm. that you want behind the numbers you just got from Alicia. Mm -hmm. Like Alicia, she just gave you a bunch of numbers. That's great, but numbers aren't everything. Story by itself is not everything, but to combine, when you can tell the narrative of what the kids are doing and why we're measuring via these, those pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we have some data on it that backs up and tells us to make sure, and go right to Stephen's words, of the return on the investment, this is what we're seeing. I think we could, I don't know, maybe we could, we've got little five minute videos occasionally mm -hmm. of, I don't know, going in a classroom right. and talking to some students or just yeah. even seeing what the classrooms look like. Yeah. How are the student learning outcomes? Of, are they in the form of targets? Are they in the form of I can statements? Are they, how are students understanding what it is that goes from those posters? To the classroom, mm -hmm. yeah, and that could be done with photographs just put into, mm -hmm. you know, motion or a video. To me, that would save people having to be here, mm -hmm. but it gives a picture, like you said, the story. It may not be as polished, real as the children actually. Well, I think one of the things Flora pointed out that I thought was, it was polished, but when something wasn't, how they came together. Mm -hmm. To say, wait, I know how to fix that, or I can do that, and the um, collaborative nature of it solving, came yeah. across. Right, and all of those transferable skills. Right, that right. Yep. Versus today. getting up and having something that you've practiced in class for a week, yep. and nothing goes wrong. You know? Right. Yeah. It was. It was. I thought good when things did go wrong a little bit to see that collaboration mm -hmm. and to see the kids step up. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing went wrong really badly. It was just the PowerPoint would go south or something, and they stepped right up. I'm, so you're concerned with all the data that has to be shared. I'm concerned with all the learning that has to happen for board members. Mm -hmm. So I need to know student learning outcome by grade. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the student learning outcome itself, there are 13 of them. And there's a definition. So all, all, all our observation would be is to say, I saw these six I saw this, demonstrate. I saw I, just the cooperation. Mm -hmm. That's in the interpersonal part of the transferable skill for that. For self guidance, creative problem solving. I saw that. Well, they're speaking. Literacy. I'm, not, I'm not asking you to learn. No, that's why we have, we pay professionals to do that. Yeah. to know that. I'm asking you to be able to say, those 13 that we said yes to on May 2016, I get that. Mm -hmm. I don't get much below that, but I get what those 13 are. And I can tell you what each, I can tell you, if you ask me what mathematical is, I, you know, we expect them to be proficient in their math, not only procedural math, but to conceptually understand it. And that's what the standard says. But, but 
I think that's part of what you're hearing from Ruben. We can't tell you the profession. profession. No. We can just say we observe right, that. Right, right. That's all, that's all I'm asking for. It. Okay. There was evidence that they had a chance to show their level. Okay. That's all I'm asking. And not, I'm not asking for you to judge the level. Just that yeah. we observe that outcome. Yeah. So. Because you, so thinking about those students, there was a range of ability of those mm -hmm. students. You probably saw it in their speaking, and you probably saw it in some of their, mm -hmm. right, what they created. They, they're so you don't need to determine what is proficient, but was there ev did each of those children show evidence of learning in one of those areas? So, the thing that keeps going around in my head is I think we have four or five forms, and so because this is what I do, we just have looked at each of the presentations in a vacuum, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, frankly, I think a lot of my discomfort of it. With, with it came out of misusing the forms and just not understanding. I'm, I'm actually, I think I'm going to steal a few minutes and find the kid's presentation with one form. And I'm gonna give the form another shot, uh, just for my own personal learning, yeah. because I think mm -hmm. that I will come away with a different reflection uh, doing it the way that you suggested where you sort of watch the whole thing and it'll trigger the memories of talking to the kids and all of that and then just taking five minutes to you know do one form for mm -hmm. the whole group mm -hmm. and the whole mm -hmm. experience um, and I have a sneaky feeling that I'll be more more comfortable with the form in that in that format Right. I mean, they, I've seen the form used with one student, and I've seen it, as you did here, this was probably the most I've ever seen. No, I shouldn't say that, because Kari did it with the middle school, with a middle school presentation from every middle schooler going one hmm. time when he was down there, and a couple other board, I just remember Kari, there were a couple other board members down there during the middle of the day. But, I mean, the whole team was going, so, on presentations. But I think it's, I think it's harder the more students you have. But it's, mm -hmm. the idea is it's holistic. Right. It's right. not. And that's where I it's got holistic. All you around. can't break yeah. it into its yeah. parts. Yeah. 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 It wasn't I, about your diary. No, that's just right. a summation of what did you see. Right. Yeah. And I, I think what I liked was the, the that differentiation of you could see the kids were at different levels and their comfort mm -hmm. of, you know, their mm -hmm. comfort of explaining or, or how. Some didn't speak at all. Some, some only had all. something, yeah. right? Some, and they and were, there were backup support in other ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and how passionate mm -hmm. some of them yeah, were. Like, even like my son doesn't like to write too much, but he was writing about football helmets, so he was like writing away. Well, his like, presentation was amazing. Yeah. And he's just like he, totally he into it. That part like, away. He was and just his like, confidence. He he loved the, he loves talking sports. So he can, yeah. any data, any like he yeah. will just yeah. tell you. But it was like you know like it was exciting to see him so excited about right. school, right? <laughs> so as a parent, it was mm -hmm. just like and and Isaac, you know Ryan, you know like his volcano. All of them were just so so excited about school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was what, and you don't get to see that always, right? As a board member, unless you're right. here, uh, you know a lot. Right. Or as a parent, or, I mean, or their, their parent. entire day doesn't look quite that exciting to them, <laughs> right? Yeah. In his sixth grade eyes. But when they come home, and you say, "So, what'd you do in school today?" Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the best part, or... recess. <laughs> but, but you had evidence, right? That that they act, that there was learning that was going on, and I think that was my hope. And when I met with Mrs. Shedd and said, she said, "Sure, we'll take this on," and I said, "You know." I don't want it to be just one thing because I want the board to be able to see a range of what are they learning this year. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that you saw, you know, it was a little bit of everything. How's the administration gonna use our feedback? So we, the board, none of the boards have gotten to the point <laughs> where they've been able to give us feedback yeah. because it's frankly really hard to make, um, to keep pulling, to keep having these I would like to have the feedback, just uh, part of it for me, the reason to have board observation is more for you to have the narrative and less about you giving us feedback. Okay. Well, I, it, well if there had been concern. Right, right, right. I, that that I would def be, that definitely I would take that like, yeah. hey. Well, see, for me, I, I, I cannot say that there was demonstrated learning because I don't know where they were to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
these students could have been okay. able to do this in the first week of school. Right. I, I don't know. So All I can say sense. is we, these students demonstrated transferable the skills. Ability to but here, there's a key word in here. There was an opportunity <laughs> for learning. Yeah. We don't, we don't, I agree, we can't and aren't able to assess whether they learned. And I, I think that's where we keep getting hung up a little bit, okay. is that we're just looking to see if there was an opportunity in the project that led to the presentation to learn. Not to what degree the kids learned or anything else, but um, you know, maybe taking it a step farther, was there an opportunity to learn and was there room in that opportunity for um, for these particular either non-transferable or transferable Core skills yeah. to be brought to bear in this project, right? So there was obviously, there was a transferable skill of, of cooperative um, teamwork when things went wrong, right? So we could check that box off and say, yes, there was, there was clearly an opportunity for, for that in that moment, um, and you know, looking at, um, looking at the the football one is the one that's coming to mind because it's been talked about. Was there an opportunity for you know going into a subject or a topic and learning something about it? Not you know, did he know it all coming in? But was there an opportunity to go deeper on that and learn something? But maybe you, I can help you a little bit there, Ruben. There might have been something where he learned. I, I didn't see the presentation, so mm -hmm. I'm way out in left field. Mm -hmm. So let's forget about the transferable skills. What content knowledge was there opportunity to learn from what you right. saw presented? You obviously saw some speaking skills, mm -hmm. so there's probably an opportunity there. So we can go into the language arts and literacy. To just, I mean, I don't know if there, was, if there wasn't any social sciences. Well, there, there was right away. Yeah, there, there, there was evidence of right. And there the was. one that they're referring to, the student had to have a lot of technical, right. statistical yes. information on the cause of concussions mm -hmm. when you're hit repeatedly. So there had to be some math mm -hmm. and some data. and There was some data analytics. Yeah. analytics going through and probably stumbling over some bad data and, mm -hmm. uh, or at least one could assume yeah. that that may but I'm trying to find one there's a con there are some content areas and there are probably some transferable skills that weren't there mm -hmm. and what you want to do as a board at least and this is one thing U32 did do after its first year it hasn't done it since and they're in year three of this is they looked through them all and they said, do we see evidence what of all the have? different transferable, of all the, at that point it was core values and beliefs because it was before mm -hmm. 2016. Yep. And there was actually a couple of days we didn't. And so they looked at Stephen and I and said, could you bring us some presentations that do? Yep. And, you know, it was that piece of, are you assured as a board that the learning opportunities for the student learning outcomes are there? And do you feel like that they are for all kids and that narrative story? It, you know, I think, you know, when you ask the feedback, Stephen, yeah. for me, that's the big piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can I can work, and Alicia can work with the professionals around here to say, let's assess the performance mm -hmm. and how are we growing. And in your student learning growth is the number piece, yeah. the quantitative right. pieces that you're getting reports yeah. on. But you want to be assured as a board because you ask us this all the time when you're building a budget. Do we have everything we need so the instruction can occur? And how do I know that those opportunities are being presented? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stephen, I was going to go back to your question about like what, what how will we use your feedback and, and what feedback. And I guess for me, it's less about um, because this is your first opportunity, so I'm not going to take a lot from this. But what I'll take from it is what can I show you next time that will show you different evidence, right? So you saw this. What else can I show you to show you other transferable skills or different grade levels or, you know, in action in other ways, maybe not in a classroom setting, but somewhere else um, and looking at. So as I'm thinking about, and a question I have for you, would it be helpful to come back um, in June and, and have a little snippet, and obviously not students, but watch something that looks very different than what you saw last month to have another taste of, mm -hmm. here's totally different um, student learning outcomes. 
in action. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be classroom. Yeah, yeah that'll be great. And I, I, I was going to build it for these four. No, but, but Stephen, I, I wanted to say I wouldn't say that I would take it even a step further back because you know we all have been in the board for you know way too many years and we we don't always get to see we don't always get to see and to, to me this it sort of put into action everything I think like I know that our behavior is doing better and seeing them interact helping each other or even keeping track it was a pretty long presentation for mm -hmm. all of them to stay mm -hmm. still and you know In be engaged they, and then they didn't really need to present they 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 were given a choice to present mm -hmm. it was not like they had this like there were more kids that mm -hmm. wanted to present that spoke a lot so as as far as taking it was a snippet on time for this particular child that some of them some of us knew from from before there were several of them that like I felt I knew from before and how they have grown to me that was different but even if it's just this minute in time right now mm -hmm. it's so important to know that they are capable of doing this much you know it just shows you where they are right now I don't know how to explain it that you know like as, as a child they're doing well <laughs> you know like so, it's a well-rounded Stephen are you do you not think we shouldn't be doing these board up I can't Get a read from you. No, I, I'm not. I, I'm not against it. I, I just it, it's not far enough down the evolutionary process for me. I I mean, as a general statement, I don't care about learning opportunities. I care about results. I, I don't care. My assumption is students get learning opportunities. I'm not concerned about that. I want students that can. Read so and want, write and perform math. Want, I don't care how many opportunities they had, <laughs> right? Can I mean, that's do? why we've gone to tier two <laughs> instruction because they need more opportunities. <laughs> it's not about that they had it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sure we're in agreement that our school provides learning opportunities, yeah. but I could be wrong. So that's where we could be. Mm -hmm. But to me, it totally reframes how I do an evaluation. Maybe the evaluation isn't what I see, maybe it's what I don't see. I didn't see any of these things. So then for the administration, well, it doesn't matter which way. Well, you go either way. No, right. yeah. that, yeah, that would give yeah. me but if, the if same impression. But if Alicia yeah. and Bill were like, boy, math skills are awesome on this presentation, <laughs> and right. none of us say we saw anything right. on math skills, then there's a, <laughs> yes. it, so it's a disconnect, you, there's no alignment. But it, it could go, you could. But I think even just having those conversations is helpful yep, yep. for all of us, right? Yep. Like, what did you see? What did we think was there? What, and okay, so next time we need to show evidence of, so that right. you can, I think for me, the goal of these are so that you can see live and in action because next year, only two of you are going to have children in this school. That's not very many, right, on a board. We're so most something. of you are not going to see these opportunities in the day to day. Um, or week to week or you know how often you're here so for me it's to show you evidence that this is what it looks like in action whether it's in a math class or it's coming to speak to you or it's out on the playground um, and I think there's a lot of value there it's just a different value than what we thought we were trying to do hmm. with this form and I think the and data so, is also going to get that information and so pivoting off of what you said I think it and uh, actually sort of Steel, Steven. Steven's point. Um, I'm not interested in seeing what I don't see. What I'm more interested in is you as the professionals will have an expectation of what you think is being demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And if there's a delta between what you think is being de demonstrated and what we saw, mm -hmm. because that will be more informative, I think, I think, um, than... Um, than us either, you know, looking really specifically for things or, or looking for the absence of things. I'm not going to catch the absence of anything. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not how I work. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't feel like I've talked too much about this. So. Stop. Well, no, understanding how it yeah. can be used makes yeah. it valuable yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's, I think we'll get there. Yeah. My, my biggest piece is, is education for the board. <laughs> less about mm -hmm. and that you know mm -hmm. it's a way you'll get to understand those SLOs. I think we have all yeah. or we're all getting to that being the primary value. Mm -hmm. I I didn't go into this observation with that being the primary value. No, I know that. 
and I, I think Never. it's okay to. I, th I think yeah. it's positive. I think this this um, conversation is positive mm -hmm. uh, because there is very strong value in being able to communicate to folks who aren't in the school every day what's going on. Yeah. Well, then I got to push back against that. I, I don't think board members should be saying. I think board members can say, I've seen the student learning outcomes mm -hmm. demonstrated. But, and that's why I said I would have to understand grade rev level, proficient and not proficient and all that. I can't say that the school's doing a good job or not a good job. I can't say if any of those students were proficient or not proficient. I can't, and I don't think, a board member should be saying that. If, if a parent comes and said, you know, was my student proficient in that mm -hmm. presentation? If the answer should be no, talk to the teacher. Right. right. No mm -hmm. idea. Yes. Um, well, I think we can utilize, I think we can infer between what we see in the numbers. Like if we use the numbers with what we're seeing, we can say that whether they're doing a good job or not. Because if we're seeing the improvements in the numbers, mm -hmm. and we're seeing opportunities. Right. A lot of feel-good presentations in the world don't help if the numbers are not right. going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think for us it's a little bit harder to judge any of the core knowledge part, because that's not what we're doing, but you know, to see some of the transfer of skills, I don't think we'd be crossing any, you know, saying anything terrible today in, in the period where we're trying to engage our community saying you know like I, I saw really motivated kids you know like I so engaged uh, students like so good behavior or you know like effective communication effective communication like I just saw them that have self-direction self-awareness you know I don't I think those were things that as human beings it, that are working in the big world, we, we can we can see, and people are gonna see it in Orca too. So so overall, is I think it's good engagement to school. But I, I agree with you that we don't I don't want to be saying oh I know that all of the student learning outcomes are being effectively. I I, I that's not my my area mm -hmm. of expertise. But but I do want to know I do want to support those student learning outcomes. So the more that I know about those student learning. I feel the same way that with the multi-tier system of supports, right? At the beginning, it was kind of like weird and not weird, but like trying to understand it. The more that we understood how it worked and everything, the better that we can support it as a board. Okay. I, that's I, that's, your first. I just want to see the results. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. Tease doesn't down. matter how well intentioned and how enthusiastic <laughs> and how well people work together. If, if they're not improving, yeah. Then we got to find it. I'm not saying we don't need to invest. We need to find a different way. And I think yeah. I, I, what I'm seeing is it's working. Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong. Right. But to me, that's what that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I I I I think we continue to work on it and refine it. And I think it's going to be valuable. Okay. I just want to encourage us not to not to become evaluators and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think we want to be. I don't think yeah. you have anyone. At least for me, okay. I, I'm going to get. I, that's one thing I've been really trying to say with all this work and worked with Cal's and U32 about is, you are not evaluating. Mm -hmm. You you, really don't want you need a credential to do that. Yeah. Right. You need an endorsement. Yeah. yeah. A Vermont that's licensed hard, endorsement yeah. to yeah. do that. Okay. We good? Mm -hmm. Did you guys get what you need? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. I believe we are on to board goals. Before you so got we'll, here, we're no, we're going to move the three. we're going to move what the little arrow that I make. So we're going to start with the executive oh, committee exactly, up there. Sorry, exactly well, committee. it's exactly the same it's thing. It's the same so. thing, but yes. Yeah. I can find the executive committee. So, virtually a, vi a vast majority of our executive committee meeting were on these goals. board goals. Because if you go go back and Bill correct or anyone can correct me if we're wrong if I'm remembering it wrong. But at the last full board meeting, these were the three areas that cl seemed clearly to be the ones of most interest. And uh, it was decided then that Matthew and maybe one other person 
we're going to take an opportunity to kind of um, refine those goals and then it was presented at the executive committee meeting when, on the 25th of April um, and we talked through them and what you see on pages four and five is what Matthew presented to the executive this committee. this is refined after the executive after committee and the school quality committee. And day 30. This has been refined? Yeah, since it was presented at the executive committee and board two, goal two has been refined. Oh yeah, okay, I see the who's have the been school changed. quality committee. So, um, it's the three goals, rough, or not rough, timelines have been established more clarity around what the goal means and who is responsible for it. So the board governance, um, the discussion, and I think you can see it reflected in the notes and in the goal, it, it's not going to be specific to policy governance. It's going to be looking at um, alternative board operating practices of which policy governance is one. And then a timeline on it and the executive committee and Matthew was going to invite board chairs to also participate. Well, they're open meetings anyway, but um, specifically invite board chairs to participate uh, in those discussions. So it would be looking at how we operate as boards um, and is there a better way to operate? Is that a fair summary? Yes. And it's an executive committee responsibility. The second one um, was on board monitoring. Um, the who was easy, at least from the executive committee perspective, because there's already school quality committee, and at that last full board meeting, we made it an SU wide committee. So they seem to have the expertise, so they're the who. What was it before? As far as you said, you made it an SU committee? It was a U32 school quality committee, mm -hmm. but there were members like floors always there's been the elementary schools there's were invited to participate and some did but it wasn't it it wasn't it was a u32 committee okay. um and it it the it's transcended that so it's so now there's a rep from every board mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for a rep from every board i don't know if every board is represented yes or not. yes, yes. Okay. yeah before i would actually one say one there was an opportunity for a rep from every board but not all participated yeah and since it's become an SU someone's assigned it and they okay. have been in attendance so I mean I think this reflects kind of exactly around what we were talking mm -hmm. about as far as student learning outcomes mm -hmm. in the timeline and then uh, community engagement um, I don't want to say we stumbled <laughs> There was less clarity around this goal because it became, my interpretation is executive committee discussed it, and, and you can look at the notes, I mean the uh, minutes if you want. There was not good alignment, there wasn't good clarity on what constituted community engagement. So, it, for instance, does, um, we, is community engagement part of a board meeting? Is community engagement outside of open meeting law? You know, um, I think in basic terms, th there was uh, the two main, and it's not conflicting, differences of interpretation of community engagement was for some people it was we want the community to answer questions for us. And for some it was, we want to provide opportunities for the community to get involved and, and um, discuss what less structured mm -hmm. and, and more, you know, you know, the school board is interested in multi-year budgeting and then you know, is it, are there, I'm making stuff up. How is, have a are community members? No, not a forum. <laughs> just forum. are there people that are interested in that and want to provide, get together and talk about it and provide some input, as compared to, 
we want some specific feedback on something um, because those are different. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 and you'll see it in the timeline that the, the first thing to do is, you know, exactly what do we mean by community engagement? What are we trying to do? So it's not that the executive committee is trying to push it in any direction. There was just lack of clarity. So it will go back to the full board to um, discuss and, you know, what do we want to get out of it? What do, we, what do we mean by community engagement? Could we use that tip that we got at the um, public agenda meeting? Uh, that, that was discussed, um, you mean, in the SU? Well, no, she, you remember when, when Nicole presented the, the, um, so the open meeting law at the end, you know, to, to explain the difference, she, I, I thought this was really helpful about the, the, exactly what you were saying, the two different, how important both are, but how different they are, and then we can decide where do we want to concentrate, and I think we want to concentrate in. In well, we don't know where they want to concentrate. Community. So I think there's there's a few, three yeah. people, yeah. that three or four people have had some training with Matt yeah. because someone last the spring of, almost a year ago to one of his workshops over in Lindenville. Yeah, that's um, right. But I think what I'm reading and where Matthew has gotten to, and he knows, um, it was Nicole that was up with, not Nicole Mace, but the other presenter with Matt. Nicole. Nicole, Nicole Cabral. Yeah, and, um, she and Matt have, have been colleagues before. Yeah, and so one of the things that Matthew was talking about and is investigating right now is that that's our retreat, is to get people to come together and say, let's figure out what we mean by engagement. But we all need to go through the same training mm -hmm. yeah, to yeah, have yeah. that discussion before. Yeah. We're just having a few. So I think I know on the thirtieth, Matthew will bring a lot more details because there's already been enough people. We have fourteen, and that was as of last Wednesday that I said yes, mm -hmm. we can make a meeting on the second of October of August. So mm -hmm. he's like, I think he asked me what I thought, and I said I was in agreement Just with him. It. Let's yeah. go forward. Let's start moving for an SU wide retreat. So uh, it, to look at it, goal different. three is still mm -hmm. evolving, whereas goal one and two I think are a little more. There's more clarity on um, what's going on. Okay. So so that's three three and four three. If there's any questions. And I gave you a little bit of the update on the retreat um, as of Wednesday. That's I haven't talked to Matthew. I'll talk with him tomorrow morning. He and I are meeting to work on the uh, executive committee. Uh, we haven't talked since Wednesday of last week. But he, um, and that's why if you, if you didn't respond to the doodle poll, I did. He sent people an individual email yeah. saying, "I'd like to know." I didn't where. technically respond to the doodle poll, but I emailed him. So that works. He's doing it either way right now. But he's he because was trying to get back to he only had three people that <laughs> three people that said no and one of them actually changed when it started to hear that number. So I well, think I we're good. No. And that's okay. That's what happens. <laughs> it's our yeah. retreat where yeah. I work. Mm. Oh. But yeah, maybe the only other thing the from the executive committee I'll highlight um, is two four if you're looking on page thirty one. We did have a discussion of the hiring process for special ed, mm -hmm. um, and that's the, I specifically okay. said we were going to be talking about that and brought our feedback. Yep. <laughs> so, what page was that? Hmm? What page did you say? Page 31, oh, 2.4, hiring process for special education staff. All the boards are in alignment except for one. Yep. I that. Oh. One board still wants to interview candidates as a board. And make the selection themselves. The board interview candidates mm -hmm. and selects. I only take them once. I I, I don't listen to that. I know. But it was it was interesting. Um, the and you can see it is from some of the notes. The 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 discussion for the boards that don't do that. Yeah. We're like. I see it. We're surprised board members would think they'd be better suited to hire someone. And feel like we'd pay some big bucks to some administrators. So That's the feeling in all, all, all <laughs> schools. Or came up at policy but it used to be, that used to be the policy all around. That's how we used to, we used to interview. But, but there was always a committee before an interview at the very end. 
there were the two people would come. But I think uh, SUY, I'm talking many years ago, I think that was more standard practice. 2011 is when the statute changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't so. remember us interviewing the only one. Anyway. We, 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 we used to, to you know, even when I was hired 20 something years mm -hmm. ago here. Yeah. I think the executive committee and the administrators heard that East Montpelier is satisfied with the process. <laughs> you think? Do you guys, did you hear that? Well, I heard clear? that. Yeah. Okay. I hear that. Okay. With a little caveat, but I heard that. Oh, did I have a caveat? Yeah, your caveat as long as it stays the way it is. <laughs> well, yeah. I can't agree with policy. So that you can, like, I'm totally owning my you negotiation can. skills, Bill. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill, you were saying, you shared a little bit about the retreat. Uh, I mean, you don't need to say if you can't right now, but I thought the retreat was still going to be both things. Both. I, I the trauma know. and the... Yeah, I just don't know that we can get it all done. Because we need a full day of... One or the other. One or the other. You can't... I mean, you will do disservice to both. Mm. Okay. But maybe there's an opportunity to do one one day and one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, they both need to have So here's, here's what's happening. I'm already watching it, and it's going to get worse this year because we've got three things that are coming up and a lot of committee work that's going to happen. We are down board members in other communities that we can't fill. Mm -hmm. We're losing board members. I, <laughs> I just asked the governor to fill that spot. Not, not on, our, on our boards? In Berlin, yeah. Oh. So um, we are down people and we're burning people out. Mm -hmm. And I have more and more people saying I can't do more mm -hmm. that are your fellow members. So and it's I hear you, floor. It's, it's not, floor, mm -hmm. I, I hear mm -hmm. you. I mean, I hear the importance of things. Um, it's just we can't do everything. And we have to decide what we want to do. And I think as a board, you should give input if there's one way you feel strongly or another of those two topics. And you should give that input to either your executive committee member or if we're going to be there on the 30th, because that's where we're going to start talking about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's really, we, have, and it's the same thing I said to Alicia and I were just having this conversation mm -hmm. an hour ago. I was like, so tell me your priorities because you mm -hmm. can't do it all. You're going to have, and it doesn't meet necessarily, we, we can't, that's what we have to realize. We're in organizations that can't do it all. Uh, I mean, it's one of those. I struggle with this. Mm -hmm. We won't do it all. Right. We'll do nothing. So we we're end up prioritizing now. by default. And so then we're not actually being intentional about the things that we're letting fall by. So the opportunity is to decide what things we're going to let go, which is hard because it means that we actually have to let something go if that's, you know, but that's a healthier way in, in my, and I've been practicing this a lot. To help you feel better, <laughs> Ruben. I, 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 so, so my bias is to do the community engagement mm -hmm. over the trauma. Mm -hmm. um, so if people feel differently, make sure I know that. If all four of you feel the opposite way, then I, that's what I'll advocate for to the executive committee. But from the trauma point of view as a board member, to me, our tier two and behavioral support it doesn't demonstrate that I understand it, mm -hmm. but it demonstrates that I accept that it's a problem right. and let's su and that support it. it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope that mm -hmm. comes across yeah. from yeah. the board. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So for me, community engagement is way more important because, and so this isn't a slam, this is just an observation. There's nobody in the SU it seems to have a good handle on how to improve our community engagement. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long have we been but spinning really this? And I don't want to spin it anymore. I want to yeah. do something. And what is it? Because if there's an event here, this place is packed and the road's filled. Mm -hmm. so but that's not community engagement. Yeah, that's school engagement. Well. Mm -hmm. that's, that's different. I think what you were saying is if we have this retreat, it's to learn. So what learn. as a board or right. as boards? Right. I mean, and some people have asked for a, prep, a primer, and I said, I can give you a primer. I've written one this past year, my lit review. Yep. We'll talk to you about community engagement, what it is and what it isn't. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I, I don't know, I've attended like three or four, of, I attended the Linden Bell, I attended like three of the, you know, I love community engagement, so that's sort of what I always want to get better at. We, it's, it's, you know, it's definitely complicated and we need to do it both ways, knowing what might not come to us on June 1st, we don't know what's going to happen, we're going to need community engagement more than ever, it, depending on what they tell us that our alternative will be passed or not. So, uh, one of, hear anything from anybody. But, but you know, anyway. we'll we'll start to hear we'll start to hear something. But and, but at the but at the same time, I feel like some of us are at least our our board because I don't I I know most of the other board members, but maybe not as as well. I just feel like the. It's, it's hard for me to decide one, you know, one or, or, or the other because the trauma educates you in a way that mm -hmm. you're more aware. Of it. Like we are affecting kids yeah. okay. left and right <laughs> all the time and grown-ups. Can we do that? <laughs> and and, and, and grown-ups. And it's just like as, a, as something, as, as growth, as, uh, as human beings and understanding each other and how do we make decisions is... It's amazing. It's something that the state is really invested on. So it, it, I, I'm having a hard time, truthfully, mm -hmm. dis deciding what you know. We support our tier two and, our, and but I don't. I don't think that that's necessarily how we feel across all of the all of the schools. I don't. I don't know that everybody really understands the depths of of trauma. That's how I felt. After mm -hmm. Wearing my school board hat, I think the community engagement pieces is a higher priority. Personally, I would really like to do the, the yeah. trauma and resilience work because of everything that you just said. But in terms of where it comes to bear in this very small microcosm of my world, I think the community engagement for me, I would prioritize that, even though personally, I'm more yeah, and I, so, uh, <laughs> so the limitations on the dates available for the SU retreat were based on administrators, right? So every all of us to a, all of us as a collective group, and for me personally, but it's true for most everyone have something scheduled for every day except for the 2nd of August because I held three days for two days of administrator retreat. So I gave the administrators, because I had promised them they would have the other three days that week, I gave them the news last week, mm -hmm. you don't have three days anymore, now you have two. I was just wondering if... There was room for another day. Somewhere. Another day, so if we like... don't include... The administrators. Do we so need to what I, here's what I here's what I heard from it, or do we need? So to, I think it so. Sense to have you there. I think. I'm just. I'm not even going to qualify. I'm just going to say, I think you have to have your administrative okay. team there because something that Ruben and I are have worked on together in another realm. This needs to be a together. A retreat is about togetherness. I understand. I just. I. I agree. I. Th I. I'm. Um, Leaning towards where floor is, I think it's pretty important, and I'm, I would love to fit it in somewhere. What the trauma part? The trauma. And, um, to me, yeah. no. Go ahead, Alicia. No, no. To me, the the place for trauma. It, this is to me. Isn't it a board? It's at a community forum. Mm -hmm. It's less about board members knowing and more about community members knowing. Community engagement. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of ironic because the, the, the trauma thing, the, the SU retreat started as a trauma thing. That's how we said that we wanted to have an SU That's retreat true. to do the trauma. We kind of spin yeah. it up from here. But we could have that at different schools. I felt like we owed it to the to the staff too because everybody like as far as continuity you know like the the staff hasn't had the community engagement in this case we would all have it together but the staff has been working on the trauma and stuff so I, i'm not trying to make it complicated i just don't want to like totally let it slip mm -hmm. so maybe there's other ways to like holding we own the movie and maybe we hold one night at Calas, one night at east mobilier one night so at, I've, I've got to say this but, it, that movie works really well when you have skilled facilitation. 
Yeah. For that. And so then you'd be talking about five or six. Yeah. It's one of those things where um, I actually think it's better as a community piece. I agree with Stephen on that. Um, and you know, we've had folks that have, have done that with that movie, have facilitated that. We also have kids, high school kids, that are very skilled at facilitating the, the, the community circles and those so discussions. Could we do something where we, maybe it is, maybe it's an evening and we invite the community and the board and we have a facilitator and we show it at U32 or something. I just, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so and those are definitely yeah. things that can be done. I think it's it's that way, that way it's, it's done and it's yeah. facilitated, right. but it's not at all done. So, but yeah, yeah. And but. it makes room for this other work that we also need to do. So I'll walk back my last. You know, maybe maybe we don't have to <laughs> even more. So to something. Well, <laughs> well, that's, I, well, that's I, all I was trying to. So say. that's where this is what I'm getting confused about as your superintendent. You gave us student learning outcomes and a mission. You asked us to build an implementation plan. You've asked us to do some other things. We have some things that are coming in from regulation. Mm -hmm. We are about to hit negotiations and we're about to hit, I can do whatever ones you want, but I'm gonna go right back where you were, Ruben, about I need prioritization from you mm -hmm. as a board and from the overall board. Because as we, the more that we, and I'm getting, you know, I'll tell you, we're right there with a the racial ethnicity. I'm not saying it's any of it's bad or good. I don't want to put any qualifiers on it. I just want you to know that as we get, we only have so much personnel time mm -hmm. and time in our day. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about everyone in the system. So as we put more things as tasks to be done or goals to be done, mm -hmm. we dilute pieces. Because I'm going to use my colleague to my left. She's got so many hours in her day, and she has a family, and she has to sleep at some point, and probably eat would be a good thing as well. <laughs> but, you know, there, you can, I, and maybe this is stuck in me, but I just read a research paper last week about K-12 burnout for leaders. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things you can do is keep changing the targets or keep adding mm -hmm. things to do. I don't and think it doesn't it doesn't mean that trauma a film I'm not saying I'm not picking on just the film as be, saying this because of the film but the consistency and staying on target that's why I stay really tight to the implementation plan as your superintendent to say that piece it doesn't mean we can't have a night for a film that's not what I'm talking about but I'm using it as a springboard of saying we need to decide to stay on that and I'm willing to switch I'm willing to take that direction so I just I, I guess I, from my perspective the 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 movie has been pretty consistent. Like we've set from this board, I think mm -hmm. we've been pretty consistent about saying we want to participate in that. So right, I think you're right. I think the change has come not from this board. Right, which is okay because we're a member of the supervisory union board. So, uh, but just, I think that's fair to, to Sorry. call out. Well, if I was gonna try to tie it together, <laughs> this, and we'll use the trauma, mm -hmm. we'll use the trauma movie. <laughs> that if it's facilitated, it's useful, mm -hmm. it's effective. To me, that's a community engagement. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have anything to do with schools. Doesn't have it. Well, it, it doesn't have anything to do with school priorities. It doesn't have anything to do with what we would ask administrators to do. We wouldn't ask administrators to do anything. And it would be a community engagement where we would identify or, or provide an opportunity for interested community members to get in, engaged. You know, um, maybe the board's in, in involvement would be we'll pay for the film rental. I don't know if there's a cost. And we we'll provide a list of qualified facilitators. And there you go. Community group, run with it. And if you want a school building to have your meeting in, we can help you schedule time. But it's not something we're tasking people to do. It's something that we think is of value, and if the community agrees with us, then 
organically, there's a, a way to, we can provide resources and help, help make that opportunity come about. Mm -hmm. As compared to, we want this to be a priority in the SU. Yeah, and I, I, I was just trying to support the priority of the SU because I thought it was that an SU priority. I thought that every staff member had seen it, and I thought that we need yeah. to do a better it job is. at funding what is necessary for that, you know, resources. But but maybe I'm I'm wrong. So. But, I, but what you just said, the the funding comes from the community. So. Yeah. Going off of what Stephen just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right? doing it as. I mean, that that makes. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, to to do it in a facilitated way. So I that agree. Yeah. So that it has all of that value, and yes, maybe it's not a board meeting, so maybe people aren't compelled to come. But hopefully, it will have value. There uh, were already people, people that will, wanted to come. come. Right, and then, um, and then it broadens that engagement with the community because we're experiencing something together mm -hmm. as community members and a board and we'll all walk away with and administrators with right because yeah. you are right. saying that we exactly. needed the participation from the administrators if we're going to do this right so so all i wanted was that it doesn't fall off you know because i know we have to prioritize so so i think but i feel better work, about what you said right now so it's not like it's just going to disappear so no. so i think but, for board work and for prioritization um we're not asking you to take point on this, right? Mm -hmm. I think we can, we either, the this we or the larger district we um, can take point on it so that it's not something that you're spending a lot of time on um, so that we can better focus on the community engagement piece in the retreat. And it is that that's a change from what we had originally talked about. True. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but. But it'd be nice to have. For me, I feel like it's actually a positive change. Like, I think the impact of that mm -hmm. um, experience will be more if it's open to more folks. And that is how many other schools have done it in towns. It just, I mean, yeah. we've had well, this Billiard's conversation over like and that. over and over again with taxpayers that are like, why, yeah. right? I mean, when, when we hired you as a vice principal, what do you mean you need a vice principal? Mm -hmm. And round and round and round we went. So let's show people, mm -hmm. let's give them an opportunity to learn what it is that's walking in the door that makes the job different today than it was 10, 15, 20 or even two years ago, right? And and much like opportunistically pivot off into the into the going uh, engagement. Well, into the school start time. <laughs> <laughs> much like what we're doing in the school start time, part of where part of how we lead is to learn together. Mm -hmm. Instead of the school board saying we know these things and yeah. you should just follow us because we know. Um, there's an important there's there's a lot of value in learning together um, because then you've got it's it's an overused word but it's a more authentic connection that you have with folks um, and so then you can have a broader and more open or safe or however you want to call it discussion about whatever it is that we're talking about so I guess my, my only request would be that maybe you know Kelly would be involved at whatever school it would be presented to make sure that we are doing the same around the communities. Not completely the or same, we, but... Well, we can discuss it yeah. at the executive committee level, but I, I don't agree with Bill all the time, but on this one I will. Um, we, we can't just keep tasking administrators more and more and more things to do. I'm comfortable making this a board initiative. And as we learn how to engage our community better, then it, it can be more organic and more community. And it's, <clears throat> so 
The reason, uh, an alternative reason I'm harping on the community engagement is we've developed for the superintendent a good evaluation system. We've done two evaluations. Bill's self-report of his evaluation, the administrator's report, and the board report for two evaluations in a row have said the area that needs the most work is community engagement. So we're starting to move in a community engagement direction, and I would hate to see that, you know, it's like Bill said, but now we want to do this, and now we want to do this. I mean, all, for me, this community engagement all comes together. We wanted to do this three years ago when Act 46 came in. I mean, I've got a huge bias on this community engagement part. Yeah, and I, I and we don't we do no, we, we do we a want, bad I'm job. Not, I'm not saying we don't want to communicate, so, so, but it's a priority. Management. Yeah. So maybe maybe an ideal outcome from <clears throat> the retreat around community engagement would be a little direction for the full board for how to execute this presentation. Okay. Yeah. As in a community engagement. As, opportunity. as a community engagement opportunity. Across the SU. I think it could be well, you just need to understand. And, and floors been to the train. <laughs> it might not have anything to do with us. Yeah, yeah. we I, might have just one I, representative. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually going to say that what I'm learning: community engagement, the best community engagement, doesn't happen from a board. Yeah. For, it's for, more. For it would, so, so, like, like I, I said, the board part board. might be. Yeah. Hey, Being towns there. in so, Washington Central. We have access to this film. Um, uh, many, some community members have seen it. Here's people you can talk to. We think it's really valuable. Or, or the people that have already seen it form a group. Mm -hmm. They come to us. Can we get that film? Can we get an audit? Can we watch it in the U32 auditorium and invite all the people in Washington Central? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Steve Pate, you know, SDP. I think that's what the kids call them. Yeah, that's what they call them. Um, you know, what days is the auditorium available? Okay, yeah. can you reserve this day? Mm -hmm. And, yep, we'll get it. And, you know, there should be 15 facilitators and group here is places you can go to get facilitators. But that's how boards are involved. Mm -hmm. It's just peripherally. Right, I, and I, I guess I wasn't trying to be prescriptive yeah. about how the board did that. Okay. Um, or, or even that I'm not trying to compel the, the board to do that as an outcome, but just so to keep it sort of. Can, yes. Yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I read this? Just it's really quick. So the board should structure opportunities to receive input from the community on decisions the board needs to make. However, an effective community engagement system within a district requires the board to establish clear expectations of administrators to focus on engagement and to provide them with the resources to do so. It does not require the school board to organize, convene, or attend all the engagement activity, activities. While the board meetings can, can and should be structured in a way that allows the community input, board meetings are not the best or the only vehicle for building strong partnerships with the community. So that's exactly what mm -hmm. what, what you were talking about. Yeah. Essex, Kim, Glisson. So it's not like they, they have one or two representatives from the board that have been participating in this group, but they are not. She's not spinning right. all of the all of the all of, of the activities. But uh, so so it doesn't mean that the board doesn't have to be better at community engagement either, because when we want them to make decisions, so it's 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 both. Well, that's. Going back to why mm -hmm. we want part this to be part of a retreat is because we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. You know. But I don't think anybody's I don't you, think anybody don't saying that we don't want the retreat to focus us. I just think yeah. what we're trying to say is we don't want that to fall off. It to fall off. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm not say, I'm not discounting that we should focus on community engagement. I'm just saying that from my perspective, I don't that's want it to fall off. That's so I, what I would ask as a takeaway is it's fallen off as a goal. There are three goals. Those are what they are. It's a talk. It doesn't it's mean that it can't happen, but it's not a goal. But it can fall under one of the goals. Exactly. Such as could. Community. Under the community. Engagement. Could. Yeah. It could. And that's what we're trying to say. Yeah. It, yeah. it could. Right. But I think that's all we and can say at this point. And, I, I and, that, and we're asking same. for it to fall. That's exactly There exactly. can't be an assurance that it will. Right. But it could okay. be brought up. 
Okay. Okay. Board calendar. I didn't print mine in color, so it's useless. What is that? That's okay. Uh, I've seen uh, it. No, I, that wasn't that color. That was. I thought this was the. Uh, the work calendar that we had, and maybe we just want to table that until after. Let me uh, say this uh, about the board goals, because Stephen, you didn't, there were a couple things you didn't say that should have. That kind of goes to the calendar. Okay. The the hope is after the thirtieth that on the sixth, uh, and it's my hope along with Matthew's hope. I know I can speak for him tonight, even though he's not here. Is that the um, is that these goals, and you may want to add one. I'm going to stress the one. Um, <gasps> to goals, but will be adopted by all boards on June 6th. So that's where we're, we're headed for. That's true. And then the calendar that's in here, um, if it's black and white, it'll be hard for you the to April, tell. The April, May, June. The mm -hmm. April, May, June, and the all of next year um, has, sorry, I'm trying to flip it's to my page. Further, it's further. further. Okay. Um, that, that was actually part of my administrative report to say, um, here are all the meetings so far, except for negotiation, and we may need a transportation one. So we're going back to what we did two years ago, but we're going to start getting to places where even more meetings will be crop will be in conflict with each other. And so. So when they have a little square around them, and that, that means there's that two already, <laughs> and there will probably be more of those, especially as we get into negotiations. Hard negotiation. Yeah, Stephen. I went to the. Did you go to your training? School board association mm -hmm. training. We're, we're the outlier in school board. I know. Negotiation Don, training. And Joe is Joe. So, so these are the meetings. But I was thinking that this mm -hmm. item on here was on here for the board calendar development of the work calendar for. For us. For each month. But. I don't think it's in here. No, okay. I did send it. I did send it to Krista, but I have a copy. I I made one change to add because we every every year we fall in the same uh, in the same thing. I just put in the teacher appreciation week so that as so a board. Did you know, <laughs> did you know so that she did something on your behalf? Yes, I told okay. him. Uh, very sweet. So, but. Darcy brought some very special treats just the not other week I heard yeah, about. That was on but, her behalf, not ours. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> I didn't, oh, yes. well, I put it in, I put it in behalf of everybody, but I was talking to mm -hmm. other board members and other area, you know, in Norway, and I've been having the privilege of being at other board meetings, and and they kind of have a budget. <laughs> For, for it and it, some of them are like really great like this uh, in Norwich they bring an ice cream truck around to all the to all the schools and just for they time it so it's just like at the teacher time like they, there's a lot of very creative things and I I, I personally are all I, getting on the bus and the ice cream <laughs> I know I, was gonna say, I know I was like how much does that cost me they should do the, 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 the circle around multiple times <laughs> yes <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't want to be dragged, but uh, I, I just added that into our calendar earlier so that we can all okay. decide what yes, what you. what that is. It, that's the only to thing. Show I just different feel. culture in Florida where I taught, they put on the marquee out in front of the school teacher appreciation next week. Teachers enjoy gift certificates or gift cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mean, truly, baskets of your classroom of people bringing you mm -hmm. gift cards to Chili's and. Amazon and yeah, and and I think there's a, there's definitely something that a community engagement group can do, you know, or like, like the PTNL used to do. But there's yeah. also something even little minimal that we that we as a board can mm -hmm. do for for appreciation. So I'm not talking about something grand. I know that we don't have, but but you know we can. Mm -hmm. We, we've done it every year, but so you in put different. Put it on the calendar. And so I put it in the calendar. You won't forget about. It. Okay. And you just just for that, make sure because that that's what was supposed to be in here. Is yeah. Krista have a copy? She mm -hmm. has a copy. I gave it to her. She does, and I copy Alicia too on that one. Mm -hmm. And I did just the the reading one, and then I did one that she could edit it if we needed yeah. to. So. So like in the school calendar, you're saying you would have teacher appreciation week. 
No, 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 no. 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 Our In our board our goals, goals. Our board one. Board one. It, even though it's not a goal, oh, I, I want to the January, the February, February, March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If, even though it's not a goal, I so that's the only reason I was sharing it. It's not a goal, but I took right. the liberty to, to keep it add it. If right. we keep it in our mind, yep. <laughs> it is kind of a goal, but right. That's a good idea. I like okay. that. Okay. Um, on your time management calendar, you don't forget your anniversary. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with work, but it's on your work <laughs> time management calendar, right? If not, you're going to be lots of trouble. Important things to remember. I just cannot function with another one. Oh. Right yeah, I'm watching you, and you're right up here than I have what, on my line. What is my turn? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, I BSBA think we retreat. The three I'm guessing that you. BSBA retreat. I think we talked about that, didn't we? Oh, VSB, not our retreat. That's in October. BSBA retreat. Who? You I, wanted it on the agenda. Uh, no, I wanted. Well, no, I wanted the retreat. The VSBA. Yeah, I can give you a report on the VSBA. The oh, retreat was on Washington the Center. on the Washington Center okay. retreat. Sorry, <laughs> I it just it just, it just got put together, and we already talked about the retreat. It just yeah. do not forget about to talk about the retreat, but I brought it up in the other one. Okay. Uh, as uh, as far as the the BS, uh, BSBA is uh, a update, I'm just gonna open that up here. You guys all received the email. Uh, Sue has been doing a great job keeping up with what's going on in the state house. Uh, I think to and Bill probably can speak better to this. Two highlights uh, to share is in May to less not last Tuesday, so May 10. It was May 8th, I believe, on a Tuesday. There was a a press conference at the at the state house where for one of the first times all everybody the NEA, the SBA, Superintendent Association, Principals Association, Paracators Association, am I forgetting somebody? Yeah, uh, there's a para one. But, but it was not a para one but principals. You, no, there was a the, para there, one there was a, Jean, what was her what, NEA business NEA office. Person? Business off business. There was officials. business but the younger lady she was yeah, really she was from the and Meg was, was from the um, I from she student said, directors of student services association. Okay. Uh, so BCSVA. BCSV. So they all participated in a in a press conference to try to get the governor and legislators to not make a decision on the budget behind closed doors, but in in committees, so that they could have um, input from from the public. Um, legislators have said uh, yes to that, and the governor is still saying that he might veto. The, um, the budget. Which but, he hasn't done yet. But he hasn't done yet. But they start coming back. They're coming back Wednesday. Wednesday. They're coming back Wednesday for a special session. So we don't really know what he's going to do for the budget or not. Uh, and then uh, let me just open this email here. And the, 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 the NEA had a, a, an event on Saturday that I told uh, Ruben and Bill and Alicia that I was going to participate on, and they had just asked me to speak as from the school board's uh, point of view, and I was very clear that I was not, you know, it was not necessarily reflected the opinion of either board that I represented. The event uh, went really well, and Bernie showed up, so it ended up being more than we thought, and Rebecca Holcomb, uh, Holcomb was there too, so it was really nice. It was not as well attended as we the high school gym was I don't know maybe three quarters full but not completely completely full and it was the same take trying to hope that he's not going to veto the, the the budget and then the only other important thing that we had talked we didn't have an upgrade uh, an update on the preschool stuff but we did get an update in your uh, so it was on the email, but we didn't update it ourselves at our last meeting because we didn't, we didn't have time of any changes on that. The only update was on independent schools, which doesn't really affect us, but there have been some positive changes on that. Did you have anything else, Bill, that you, I, I, the preschool, you said it didn't really affect us. The preschool is uh, I mean, not much at all. I wouldn't say it was really, it's going to a study committee to see how they can make things better. So that's all. Annual I answer to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the twenty is not going to affect us because we can provide more 
more time and it's going no, back to the study. Did that, that didn't go through with yeah. the number of hours. The other number of hours hasn't changed. Okay. No, it's really just going to a study from what I read. I read it quickly this, af this afternoon. But yeah, so like I said, I didn't really read that one, the last one that came in. So I'm, I'm actually not trying to keep up too much because until we get through the special session, I think everything's on the table right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the dangerous part. Mm -hmm. Everything's on the table. Everything. 3.6 fiscal management questionnaire. So this is an annual questionnaire that you've seen for three years. I have the official one for you, Ruben, to sign. Um, but we just need to have it in the minutes that you had a discussion here at the board and had a chance to ask me any questions. Um, I can tell you this hasn't changed, and it hasn't changed so much as in it still has our old web address on it that doesn't work anymore, as it was pointed out to me at Doty. <laughs> so... Um, You'll see on the second page it says available at wcsuonline.org. We had a, we'll change that. We'll change that. But, um, we our auditors like to see that it's been you've had a chance to look it over and discuss it. It's required by state statute. Um, it hasn't popped anything for our auditors in the way in which we answer it, and we haven't had anything back from the state. Check. All right. <laughs> Reports to the board, administration. You've already heard from me. <laughs> so we're not here. <laughs> but you're not going to sign. I don't know, Bill, if you heard anything. Um, I did not do an April report, but I have a quite extensive May report that's going to come out from the superintendent that I've actually started writing the past day or so. Um, so there wasn't anything great in anything that extensive in April. And you got the board calendar, that's all I've really been talking about. Fiscal report? Yes, on page 26. Mm -hmm. um, there, the only thing that's really as we've been able to update the interest income for East Montpelier. Um, yeah. We're closing down. Yeah, everything's closing down. We're just about, actually, Lori asked me today, we'll probably have an estimated end of year report for you on June 6th. Mm -hmm. So, most of the POs, everything's in the elementary schools, most of that stuff is clear, but not completely. Can I make a nitpick observation? Mm -hmm. Last meeting, we discussed Ann Freezer to come off roof and freezer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Off the because that's not second. where it was funded from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't go in detail on the food part, but that still looks good yeah. when I look at the total numbers. Yeah, we're in okay. great shape. Okay. Our collections are in very good shape also. $200, typically it's $200 or less school-wide, including staff. So it's, you know, a couple dollars here and there for children. It's so much easier now. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have tightened that up. I know, too. I can seem to. I already did 4.3. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, again, that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Oh. Oh. Saying, I went oh. to it and tell you. I'm just worried about it. Sure. Let him speak to it. I know. That was so easy. All right. Um, policy committee? Should be. Uh, we met last week. We have new members on the policy committee. It will be a different committee than it has been. Um, we reviewed some things. We had a lot of discussion. I don't really think we... Anything to share. I think you should share your observations about the committee. <laughs> you if you don't, I it. will. Um, <laughs> it has been in the past that our committee has felt the SBA board or those um, model policies make sense for all the schools to reduce the numbers of wordsmithing mm -hmm. and different schools having um, ones that are wordsmithed and the change, I think, is going to cause some change in that respect. 
and um, there was also, a, well, the comment was, we are not a rubber stamp committee. We have our own attorneys. So um, I kind of got a little hair on my neck, got up, and I said, I don't think any of those were a rubber stamp committee before. There's a reason there's a BSBA, and there's a reason they do this, and um, so I, I don't really know what we're in for other than nitpicking, maybe. Um, Sounds like we're in for what we had five or six years ago, and it'll just become defunct. Um, well, I don't think it's what's what going to be allowed as far as... Yeah. So is it the majority, or is it just one person? No, it's three. It's three. Oh, six. Is it a shift of three new people? Yeah, it is. Out of how many? Out of, out of six. Six, but we don't ever have so one maybe, 20, 32. Yeah, just okay. sure. So, so it sounds to me. So it sounds to me that what we needed some uh, I thought education. It was a well-oiled machine until last week. <laughs> well, maybe some some training. Uh, I think some guidance from the SU board. Mm -hmm. um, about what the purposes of the policy committee is needed. We got quite a few passed before, you know, that have gone through, so they don't have to be reviewed again for a while. Uh, uh, my feeling as the representative from this board and just being who I am, is having things that are in line. We're all educating the same kids going into the same world, going, it made sense. And to make it a lot easier for the schools to have their websites up to date, that was another comment that came up was, so what is our notebook? What are our policies? Things are a mess. Well, we're getting them, I thought, in not a mess, but that doesn't mean things have been caught up as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we were moving forward, and there were some more comments than I've heard before of, well, it used to be for that kind of, we used to do it this way. So I'm yeah, so hoping it, we, that, it, it was just like, like a first meeting, and, yeah. but so that might should be come up with the executive committee. Yeah. I think it should. Yeah, I really yeah. do, because I think um, we were making pretty good progress. Things were going through the SU board when we met at U32 for their first reading, second readings, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the board itself had been um, not board committee looking at the BSBA language carefully, mm -hmm. and then realizing, okay, they vetted it. Um, so some of the questions that came up about a policy, uh, there were, I don't know who would put the comments, but it went against statute. That's the uh, Romney That's that Romney, that's Principal Romney board. And then Romney the, Principal Preservation Policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Romney rep said, I don't even know why this board's looking at it. And we said, well, it's our job as a policy committee to look at all commit policies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Reflects a change in boards yeah. and their reps. Yeah. It'll come to go to the executive committee for discussion and clarification. But it sounds like we have some trust to gain. And the only way to gain that trust is by giving them some understanding on some of how we operate. You know, like, because if we just tell them, because I might know who's people are, if it's not going to, we somehow need to. Well, I think an understanding of, of why understanding. Yeah. This policies is how we do it. that are yeah. the same Makes sense. Yeah. If my child goes to Callis and let's say I'm divorced and my other child goes to Middlesex yeah. or something because we live in different communities, it's kind of nice that they're under the same policies. Yeah, and, that, and keep hammering yeah. in that. It doesn't mean you all lose your kids. personality at your school. Yes, and that they're, they're all our kids keep talking about that. So, I, so my voice is going to be what it has been that the BSBA model ones we look at and we. Because there's some that, how many of them are required? 28. 28 are required. How many have we gotten done? Uh, it's just the past two months that we've gotten to all of them in my six years mm. here. Yeah. Mm. That we they're were, actually all in the books. Yeah. Wow. We were making really good progress. There and are other ways to do it. So. <laughs> but we want to build, Will we want to build on our trust. Agenda to discuss? You yeah. might want to send something to Matthew. Um, I think it's worth discussing at the executive committee. Oh, good.
good time. Because I know my next meeting, I have a policy meeting till 5.30 and a meeting in my home school at 5.30, starting at 5.30. And I said, well, in the past, we were always done in time that I'd only be a few minutes late. <laughs> that didn't happen last Monday. Well, we'll discuss it at the executive committee and see where it goes. Um, there may be less alignment than recently. Mm -hmm. So some boards may be going their own route. I was the only uh, one just, that remained mm -hmm. in person you there. Can't, well, actually, you can't yeah, mandate it. We'll discuss it at the executive yeah. committee level. I just want you to show what you show for yourselves as boards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then we don't have to mandate it, mandate anything. We, you know, we have to gain that trust, so we have to. We can't, figure out we can't mandate anything. That's what I mean. I'm not saying we, we have to mandate it. We have to encourage the understanding and the trust so that we can work together. Okay. And we, somebody we can work has to on, spill. We can work on building it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. School start time. So we've had. Two public forums um, and a couple of meetings. Um, and the survey, everybody should have received the survey link, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which I realized today that I had not posted to Front Porch Forum. Has it been posted? To front I posted porch? Front yeah. Porch Forum last week. last week. And it was on WCAF. Okay, yeah. right. That's right. Um, so that's where that's at. We're gathering input from the um, from the community survey. There, there's there have been a couple of pretty vocal folks that showed up that are pretty dead set against any change. Um, yeah, there was that which letter. Which is actually yeah. the optimist in me thinks that's positive because we're going to talk about it now. Um, and it's going to come up at some point, so it might as well be early. Um, so now we're in, I mean, it was like people are against uh, something that isn't anything, is sort of <laughs> is my take on it. Like any kind of change was going to be okay. fought no matter what, mm -hmm. um, which I think is unfortunate, but that's my own personal observation. Um, so we're in the data gathering phase where we're finding out from the community, um, and if you've done the survey, then you've seen it where it's, you know, what start time works for the younger kids for you? What do you think is ideal? Rank them. What are your priorities for, um, for when, uh, for, you know, short bus routes or saving money or, uh, you know, um, and asking people to prioritize them. I have no idea how many responses we've gotten. 406 so far. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So that's pretty morning. good. Yeah. I'd say that a, that's a qualifying sample for mm -hmm. the number, if you use the parent number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're almost 25%. Um, Hopefully I'm an N of one, but I got confused on it because I didn't read the School instructions. Specific. I didn't read the, the instructions the specific enough. And I didn't realize it was one set for elementary and one set for high school. Mm -hmm. And I answered the elementary school in exactly the same way and answered the high school one. I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. so, I caught myself doing the same thing. And you can't go back and correct it, so. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's also a staff and a student survey out too right now. So next steps are to gather and compile all of that and reflect on it as a committee mm -hmm. um, and see see what we hear. And I have no window into that. So, so one question I had, are students filling it out? Because I've seen... There's a staff and a student. A student, okay, I didn't hear student. There's, there's, okay. It's gone out to three different groups. Is it's, it the same? No, it's different. It's, it's different. different. It's different. The staff and students are a little different. Um, okay. Who sent that out? There what? was a letter to the, the editor from a student. I sent it out to all staff. Yeah. I'll there probably was, do it again this week. I did it last week. Two I think it's safe to say... It was a minority. 
I think there's a reasonable chance that if a change is proposed, it's going to get noisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there are some folks who have already come forward who are going to be dead set against any change. Mm -hmm. For better, worse, good, bad, and different. Uh, it's you know, it's, gonna, it's going to require people to, to, to change. And change is hard. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're trying to be mindful of all of that. And what we're really trying to do is, is uh, gather whatever objections and positives are out there um, up front. So I think we're in the process of doing that. Yeah. And school quality committee, I believe that brings us to. So I was, like I said, I was not able to be at this meeting because I had to take the meeting to the doctor. But I did talk to Carrie after the meeting, and I talked to him at the last U32 board meeting. And uh, so I think Bill might be more qualified to talk about what went on at that particular meeting. Uh, I talked yeah, to Shani too, and yeah, I really just tried to listen because it was board members reflecting on what the data said yeah. to them. So we all took turns. We, so we made it our job, if we were going to ask other board members to do it, to go through all the data and and uh, reflect on it. Yeah. Us, and you know, the concerning part was always math for, for a lot of them and a lot of us. It was just like, you know, some is trying to pinpoint is it teaching is it you know what what it is and how what, what is the data telling us that's what we were trying to sort of the same conversation we just had about uh, that manner and just uh, the observations that we did it was is a similar conversation that we've been having we tasked ourselves uh, before tasking the boards and groups to to really look at the data and uh, and what is it saying to us uh, how do we feel now that we have seen the data? In, uh, and then, Bill, I, I read this uh, minutes, and you know, Bill suggested that we, that you know, creating a, the culture of learning, doing more professional development. You know, so there were there were things that we can uh, that we can do. But we basically did three questions. You know, what is the data telling us? What do we want to do with? Uh, what else do we want? What do we want to do? Uh, what else do we want to know? And, and part of it, it was. For the longest time, as a quality committee, I feel like we've been struggling with that policy. Is that a, you know moving into policy? And I think the more that we've been talking about it, that there's might be like a mixture of two systems that might, might be better as a committee. But we really um, policy governance is something that we are trying to base this from. That that was most you know. So instead of trying to tell people what you can't do, you know, just give them more freedom of, um, uh, no, can do, give them more. Um, it's actually better to tell them what, what they you can, can do. do. Sorry, yeah, can't can do it. what you what can you need to do. do. Yeah, so just tell them what you can do so that they have the creativity to do whatever they need, they need to do. But it's, we seem to be shifting, at least in my last conversation from <laughs> Matt and Shani, on what the balance is um, there. But we looked at this with that, Mindset, yeah. you know, and policy governance. But I, I mean, I'm, I will be excited. I am excited, um, and I'll be getting even more excited the more that we spend time as boards looking at data mm -hmm. and saying what it means to us, and it collectively as a board, what's the direction that we would like to see things going. And I believe that for one of the biggest steps for Washington Central right now is to be is to feel, and this is throughout the system, from boards to teachers to administrators, that we feel better about making decisions based on data and slow down the doing. That we're willing to say until we have clear data and that we're gonna accept the data. We, we, we trust our the folks that have chosen the, data, the assessments we use, which has been done collaboratively with teachers and administrators to say that is our local assessment system. That's the data we have. So what's it telling us? And where do we need to go next? And not try to use an excuse, well, those assessments don't work. 
So let's do this other shiny thing over here. Right, exactly. Well, we, we've set on those, and there is no one perfect assessment. And the problem with assessments is they can be misused for purposes they weren't intended. We're doing, a, I think, a really good job in Washington Central of saying we're using them for the intent they have, and we don't try to overread into them. If we need to know exactly how my daughter Megan's doing, deliberately we run a diagnostic assessment around here. We don't just do a screening assessment and tell us what that means. But if we're going to use talk about, like you saw all these assessments tonight, those are meant to do on a large scale. So a diagnostic assessment is not a good assessment to tell you how East Montpelier Elementary School or Washington Central is doing. Mm -hmm. It's purpose. the misuse of that assessment. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got that defined and it's taken us a while to get there. But then for the boards, and I asked for this in the school quality, I want the boards to ask us for goals and hold us accountable on the data. We that's good pressure for Alicia and I to have, mm -hmm. to say, so what is, not, not for boards to tell us how to get there, but say, so what do you have for a goal based on that data, and we'll tell you whether we think it's acceptable or not. And that's the system I want to see us really move into, because that's good pressure. That pressure will help the authority and responsibility be distributed all the way down through the system. So. And, uh, you know, as far as, uh, reporting in the committee, I, I, I think it's my favorite committee. I think it's just, it's, uh, there were two more members, so I was not there at this last uh, meeting, but it is really, you know, yeah. the kind of work that is it, exciting. Right. And it's, uh, I think we're all totally devoted yeah. to that work. Right. So it's, and one, one of the things we're trying to do in that group is say, what are the balance of, of modern reports? We're never going to get them right, right out of the box. We're going to get better. It's going to be a, we're going to get better as we go. It's going to be the versions idea of getting the next version better than the last version. Um, so how can we schedule the minor reports? And one of the things that um, Alicia and I have heard from our colleagues on the leadership team is much, it's much more effective and we actually do better analysis when we all say we're doing the same report. Mm -hmm. And so to go right to the conversation we were having earlier, it's not that we don't want to show you that data. I'm more than willing to do it. And it's not about lowering the expectations, it's about raising everyone's expectations. Everyone can give you the same data that, every school can give the same data that Alicia has given you on interventions. I think those are good expectations. But it's just trying to say it works better for the leadership team, because we devote a day to it, or half a day to it, and, we, and then you guys go and work some more, a lot more after that. <laughs> but we say, how do we want to present this, and how do we want to do this together? So. Yeah, the message was because I I knew and Stephen I had you in my mind um, when we were at the leadership team I I knew what you were looking for for data and you wanted to see the interventions and are specifically are the interventions working and I brought that up to the leadership team and understandably it became pretty clear to me very quickly that um, I think what's happened when when we shifted to doing principal reports in the full board packet, right, and you can see everybody's everything, there's conversation at different board level, at, at the board level with principals, and it's happened here also. Um, you could do this, or what, you know, this this report has this, but yours doesn't have it, and there, be, there starts to have that comparison that's not healthy. healthy. Um, so we agreed um, to stick with the same slides this time for all schools are looking at the exact same. It was hard for me so to I, do I, that. Yeah, it was. It was I you actually, you actually challenged me afterwards on that, but I said, no, I will take it on the chin from your board. It's my role as a superintendent. I'm the one that responds, reports to the board, but the team decided this is where we're going. Um, and it doesn't mean we can't go there. It means we want to go there together. So I would say that's the conversation to have. Do all schools have tier two support yes. system? Yeah. Yep. So this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They can. They can. That's why I said they can do the data. That's not the pro. The issue is, it's the doing it together, because the power for me is in the team, just as mm -hmm. Flora was saying. So for the leadership team to do it together, mm -hmm. where a couple of them sit down and look at each other when they're first doing it initially, and I don't know if you did it this time, but I know other times, Alicia, mm -hmm. you sat with one or two of your colleagues mm -hmm. and said, "Let's fit like in October. Mm -hmm. Let's finish this together." And using the same measurements, 
is what's so valuable. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And then the conversation yeah. actually gets to, the hey, how'd you do that? Mm -hmm. across the SU. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's what starts happening with the conversations. Right. It's not a competition. Right. <laughs> a, right. What I are you doing that's working? That or, wow, yours that. look great. It, it's so frustrating to me. Because... Frankly, frankly, the reason why there aren't names up there, I deliberately did that, and I would not give anyone else the name of the other school. I mean, you could go and watch all the Orca videos. And there's a couple <laughs> that want to figure, figure it out. But it's like it's not about competition. Yeah. It's about all kids being successful. But if we can see other schools are doing well, it doesn't matter what school it is. Right, right across the SU is helping or make it's not... Yeah. That's what I think is valuable. And if yeah. the leadership team is talking to each other and having that information, sending teachers over to watch something right. that's working well. Not great. How yeah. you know, how what are, are you doing? doing? What does your yeah. intervention time look like? That's how is why it different? It's so frustrating to me. Yeah. So I just have to say this and I'm gonna say truth to power. I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. I'm actually a little scared to say it. But so if you're scared anyway. to say it, don't say it. <laughs> no, because I think it needs to be said. That has been the culture of Washington Central and working separately. The more, as you said, Floor, the more that we get people working together, the competition will start to go away. Mm -hmm. But it takes years to counter that. Yeah. But, but I think it's not just, it's, it's the more that we understand, the, the, more that, the more knowledgeable, the more educated that, that we as board members are, the, the easier that it is to work together. You know, and the easier that is worth it, that is to trust. To so, I, from my so. perspective, though, we see that there's schools that are doing maybe a little bit better than us in math. I trust Alicia knows yeah. which school is which. Mm -hmm. She's going to go to that school. You know, you can go to that school. I don't necessarily. During the leadership teams, they I don't can. need to know. I, I have an even simpler question. What can this board do that would alleviate that? Just keep working on people always working together when it feels like it's hard to do that or we want to go do our own thing. Well, Even though that might mean giving up some from what this board wants to do. Say we're more, it's more important for us to all be together than to necessarily get what East Montpelier needs. And hopefully we'll get both. Yeah, and to me when I said that comment about, you know, putting weights on... on and you're better athlete. It's, it's more about kids. You know, we're always talking about kids. Kids don't have a year to lose. So we know, as as long as we're not like suddenly we're saying, you know, not everybody is doing tier two interventions. We're gonna s stop doing tier two interventions. You know, that's not what we're saying, right? Because everybody's doing tier two interventions. So as long as we're not slowing to the detriment of our kids, as long as we're not going to the lowest common denominator. Exactly. You know, we, we want to, just as we ask teachers to do differentiated teaching, you know, we would ask our leaders to do differentiated leadership, but, you know. So do you, we have to meet everybody where it is and bring everybody up from the bottom, from whatever you, you know, everybody has a different way to say it. But yeah. this is to me, that policy a little bit with a comment of, but our communities are all so different. No, they really, they aren't. No, they're, they're it's about the kids. <laughs> and that's, the and kids the are kids all are going to U32, and they're going back out into the world. And it's not about making, well, it's because your kids get to wear hats and our kids don't get, it's not those little things. Mm -hmm. If we have common curriculum, we have common expectations, and they're high expectations, then the data will show how some of this is or isn't working, and that's for the leaders to talk about and figure out. Right. But feeding it to us is helping us see mm -hmm. it and make decisions fiscally um, as far as. But it's not about us being different or. Mm -hmm. No, there's a difference in the culture of governance mm -hmm. more than there's a difference in the culture of the towns. And every school can have its own little quirks and decorations and whatever, but in the end, it's about the learning and the opportunities. And it's supposed to be. Yeah. So why show us all the schools within the district? Why what? Why show us? Why that? show that slide? Because that's what the leaders are working with when they're making decisions. I think but, it helps us understand. 
And I, I, I tell you the truth, when I saw the slides, I, uh, I, I couldn't really tell which school was school until Stephen did the same thing. He kind of pointed to who U32 was. We've been we, pointing out each, everyone knows who, I mean, you saw the data on the slide before, so right. we just said, you, you know, just matched the numbers. Yeah, you just it's, matched it's, the numbers. Exactly. People who were so then you fast figured out what was the number, and then yeah. we were right. trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. But what it told me, and everybody else uh, agreed too, they talked about it uh, at the end, uh, seeing it all together, is like definitely we, we don't have the time for another initiative, so I'm not trying to say that's why we need to do that. that. That there's, you know, meaningful education during the summer is something that we have to figure out how, how to do. You know, like they are spending, at U32 especially, they're spending a lot of time catching up the with those sixth vacation. graders. Yeah. So they, we asked, they asked even several questions. There were not a lot of people, so it was Matthew and me, and then Matthew left. So about, you know, what, is it, yeah coming into school and having all the social part is it this is there's it. so many factors and there could be so many factors but one clear thing was that you know having something during the summer would be significant mm -hmm. and we know that from mm -hmm. the data even in our own in our own students so seeing it all together shows us the, the same thing it's not it keeps telling the story that it's all our kids and maybe it's right. easier now i think that we've been talking about that that's one good thing about Act 46, right? It made us really dig into looking at everybody and talking with everybody. Maybe not, didn't have the same effect in everybody, but all we can do is Maybe hope. Everybody inched at least a little bit closer to our... So from a board perspective, what's our discussion? But it doesn't what are we doing together? together? What are we doing as a... How does that data inform us? To, so here's what I would say. If we want to do something together, then together there's a standard that we want to set for Washington Central. We did. And it's... We want 80% proficient or very proficient in literacy within three years and we want to see this progression year to year. And all the boards agree on that. And that's what everyone's moving towards. But what we saw today, mm -hmm. so what? Yeah, and that, I mean, that's why I said what I said earlier about with the data is, I'm looking for direction from the boards about what you want for the data. Because I, I, frankly, I need that. And the leadership team needs that from the boards to say, we need to know, because what I don't know if that's good enough or, I mean, that's the discussion we were in the fall. But that's what that's we were the, talking about the, in the quality committee. You know, what, what is this? Is this acceptable? Is this right. what we want? But it, whether we were looking at it, the way I see it, Stephen, even if we were all together, we had one single board and we were seeing the data for everybody aggregated, we would probably be looking at another district to compare our data, right? That's what it's helpful right oh. now we're just you know so maybe so we so see math is better in I don't know from I can't remember right now what, what can we learn I think them? it's a mistake to compare us to someone else we set what our standards are and we compare to how we're doing about where we want to be hmm. I think it's I think it's a huge mistake I think it's a huge mistake to compare how we're doing to the other schools in the SU you know, we could be the best school in the SU From a, and the sixth worst in the state. Right. What do I care where we are in the SU? I could because, care less. Because we're feeding I want, middle school. I think we, if it's about the kids, we and we're talking proficiency, mm -hmm. and we're talking mm -hmm. the, the local measures we have, it should be this is where we want our kids. Mm -hmm. I, so we're lower in math than we are in literacy. I'm making stuff up, so no, don't true. take notes. It's, it's, true. Yeah. By about it's like, you know what? Next year, we've got some more. I, I, I'm not going to tell Alicia how to do it, but I want the math numbers to move right. significantly more. So I want a, a want additional 5% jump. Right. That's the target. I mean, I think that's what we can do together as boards. Yeah. But, I mean, I have to be express some negative part, some boards won't have the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. And we can't help them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 
So maybe we can't do things together. Maybe their targets need to be different than our targets. But their, ideally, their priorities would be largely aligned, right? Because uh, we can, I could be, we can work to move in that direction. Yeah. I don't disagree. But that's the leadership of the superintendent when he meets with the yeah. leadership team. Yeah. Not for the priorities. The board, right. the no, board's going to set because I board. what I what I interpret as priorities for the SLOs is they're all equal, and so we equal, try to equally resource them, mm -hmm. which we don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so I mean, because one of the things that will come down, and it's a good discussion for the board to have, and it's one frankly the board should be right in the middle of. So, approximately about forty percent of the kids are proficient in math. About seventy to seventy-five percent are in reading. S U wide. S U wide. If you take a look at that, okay. So um, we want to increase the math. We want to increase the lit literacy. Okay. So there's not an endless set of resources, whether it be mm -hmm. time and or money. Right. So, so what's the comfort level of all the, something else? Well, right. maybe, or is there a way to combine it? Because I'd, I'd like not to be in the game of zero. I'd like not to be in the zero sum game. Mm -hmm. Game. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be in the. Uh, how can we make this better and lift other things? But in my and I've been very public about this. For me, as an educator for my twenty five years, I believe everything starts from literacy and numeracy, and that kids need to be numerate and literate. And, and that our system's very much set up that way. Um, and I, I need that reflection. And I, I don't want to go there by myself because I think that that's a dangerous place to go. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I think that's not a healthy system. I don't think you're by yourself when you're with your leadership team, with the principals and the people looking at the data and but I, figuring out there's always room for we can, improvement. We can figure out how to get there. It's that, are we willing, what's that, what type of, what is the board, I, and Callis, Callis has been hearing me this for two years, what are your priorities? Mm -hmm. You know, because Flora and I have had these discussions, and I, I can see what she, I can read her from here. <laughs> like, and I'm, 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 you know, so it's which, you know. Do you want to lose Art and music. Art. I was going to no. say, it's, it's you a know, other <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> we love Spanish. But, yeah. but, you know, and I, like I said, you know, but I mean, numeracy is also music, right? You're learning to, right. or literacy, you're learning to read music. Like, and, yeah. you know, and I, for other kids, they were different. So we don't need to get down that road with our. Well, if we can't get down that bill. road internally with ourselves. Oh, no, I, I didn't know. No, no, no. I, I just like felt like we were, if we can't, I, I'm happy to I talk think about it. I we're, email Bill about it. We recognize there's room for growth. Yeah. And well, I yeah. think it would be likely. But how much growth do we want? So when we wrote, when the leadership team first met <coughs> and started talking about this, we and we talked about, I don't know if you remember, like what percentage, because the old, um, whatever it was called, strategic plan, yeah. you know, had percentages mm -hmm. like you were talking about, and we said, no, it's all students. It's, it's all students will be proficient. In all subjects. In all subjects. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, the, that was our target. Mm -hmm. And we got reflection back from board members that that was too aggressive. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can't financially. <laughs> and we're not right, that's, that's what we got. We can't get yeah. there. I understand that, but how do you not set that as a goal? I agree. And, so well, that's what that, well, <laughs> that, well, that, well, that, that was what we leaned So you were a big like, supporter of no child's left behind? <laughs> no, it's no. <laughs> that goal no was 100%. But no, 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 but, but, but what does it mean? What does it mean? Who is not in that 100%? Yes. Right. Are we to say this child shouldn't right. be in the I mean, all students? But that is that we had that conversation for days at a summer retreat, just going back and forth. Do we set a target at ninety percent, ninety five percent over X number of years, or do we just say all students? Well, it's we did hundred percent over X number of years, but it's going to have to be a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's to be a little more scoped about it. We say we would like. I'm making numbers up, but if we saw a 10% a, a change in math this year, we'd like to see a 15% change next year. 
like, I, I, these are the wrong numbers, but right. we, we would like to see that it was whatever, it was 49 to 51%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, next year, we'd like to see it more like, you know, 65, 35. Closer, to, we, we'd like to, maybe it's as simple as we'd like to close the gap, <coughs> the achievement gap between literacy and numeracy. We would like to see some forward progress on that, right? Because that has been something that this SU, that this school has struggled with for a decade anyway, and probably two. I think this was going on when Justin was first entering the school system. So, uh, you know, the, this conversation has been going on for a long time. So, saying that we want everybody to be proficient, of course we want everybody to be pr proficient, but that's not directed enough to give the administrators a task that they can sort of dig into. So maybe the direction is, uh, you know, whatever distance the gap is, that the gap in achievement between literacy and numeracy is cut in half, you know, and maybe it's two years, I, I don't know, but just in terms of sort of a little more direction from us in terms of what we're looking for, um, that would that be helpful? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not to say deprioritize literacy, but it is saying, look, we obviously have been doing, we've been focused more on literacy for a long time. That's, that's reflected in mm -hmm. our perennial gap between the number of kids that are proficient and literate and the ones that are enumerated. But so we've had a math specialist in the district for a couple of years. Wait, right. so mm -hmm. we, I don't think we have to be prescriptive about yeah. how this works. I think that we can agree that that's not enough. Right. And we'd like to see that gap close up. So and I, I and then we have to support the administrator agreed. shifting resources to accomplish that. I understand that. Yeah. I, I think that is that is the... Or look at how the resources are. That is what we empower them to do every day. Yeah. Yeah. Time studies or whatever. So that may mean that, you know, the next budget cycle when we're talking about tier two supports, there's a, Adequate a support. shift in those tier two... Th mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But maybe those tier two supports start to laser in on that. Right, and they focus less on these other things. No, but That's it, not that for is, us to. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly the right. conversations that we're having. Looking at this data all year long, right? So those numbers have real children attached to them, and we're right. saying, so this child is not making that progress. What are we going to do? Um, and why I came to you in January to show you our interventions and how, mm -hmm. you know, they got whittled away at and you, mm -hmm. you put yeah. support in for increase next year because we know that, you know, each number is attached to a human being who, right. who is or is not making progress. Sufficient progress. Right. But Bill, to address what you said, we can do that for our board. Uh, yes. All, all we can do is share that information with other boards. Mm -hmm. There's, whether there's not a mechanism, mm -hmm. other than sharing what we have, right. to be being willing to collaborate, offering up, but that is true. Boards can do whatever they want. That's right. And the but priorities can be completely different. They can, and I mean, as long as we're not a single district with a single board, that will continue to be the case. But. Um, we have been able to show that, like, the Tier 2 support system that we piloted, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. yeah. works. Yeah. And as a result, the rest of the district is doing it. So, you know, I, well, okay. I'm not saying there's no, there's, it's just putting some data, actionable real data about the results. And we may try something and it totally doesn't work and that's mm -hmm. actionable 
or mm. unactionable. Well, <laughs> and, and uh, that's why I wanted to see data to support that. Mm -hmm. In my mind, tier two was put in place to close the, the gap. Yeah. gap between free and reduced lunch and non-free and reduced lunch. It, yeah. it had nothing, to, uh, well, I shouldn't quite put that, the priority wasn't increasing the number of students proficient in math and increasing the number of students proficient in literacy. It was closing the gap between the, free they and go, reduced they go hand lunch to hand and non-free. They, they it, 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 hmm? it wasn't one it wasn't or the one other. Or it was one or the other. It was both. Right. To, be, right. to measures me. would benefit everyone. But the, the right. data that we've seen, or what I've seen, has been more around free and reduced lunch and non-free and reduced mm -hmm. lunch, and mm -hmm. it hasn't been that around how, what's the impact on math and literacy. Mm -hmm. That's why I was interested in seeing it. I'll bite my tongue. I mean, I, I understand. I'm willing to... Okay. But, I, I, but there knowing was... that all schools have interventions and there yeah. is an October monitoring report, is there a way that all schools can present, right? Like, this is what we presented for spring. Is there something that can get to that for all schools in October? And that's what we we're trying to do at the Quality Committee. That's exactly it. So, like, at the last, mm -hmm. at the meeting in, in April, I was just going through the minutes, and at the meeting in, in March, we didn't ask this question again. We kind of forgot. Uh, Carrie had said uh, that what else do we need to know about our students' math performance? Are we, are we seeing all the, the, is there something we're missing that you could, you, about the students' math performance? Is there anything? No. You're no. seeing, I mean, you're seeing, Everything. I mean, we're see, you're seeing the, the, the data. data. Okay. I mean, you I can show you with multiple measures the same percentages, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So we trust the data. So we yeah, we trust the data. Think, and yeah. then we actually were thinking we're getting to a place where we're starting, you know, in October, I said we didn't have alignment between the system. If things carry out the way they've been carrying out so far with a very tiny sample right now. Looking at us back in the local data. Mm -hmm. it's starting to Should align. Should be alignment. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Then we can start using that local data to really drive changes mm -hmm. in and practice. When you meet with teachers, I assume you ask questions like, how many minutes a day are we teaching math? Or would this we, be I don't ask them that. We know, I know we have that. To ask that. We know that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. But would that that's an expectation. I would think when you're looking at data and you yeah. see this gap or you see... So we've, not, we've pretty standardized across the system for math instruction. There is an expectation of literacy and math instruction across the SU. Okay. And what happens as a result, and I talked to you about this a few months ago, is that the other areas, like local studies and science, those minutes are less because the emphasis is on, um, right, that expectation mm -hmm. is you will have 90 minutes of literacy and 60 minutes of math and additional writing instruction and spelling. Mm -hmm. When you add all of that up, yeah, it's pretty good. that is the priority in our school. Right. And if you've got 90 minutes of literacy and 60 minutes of math and the scores are proportionally True. reflective of that, then... True. <laughs> Should we have 90 minutes of math? Hopefully it doesn't make any hard. There's a lot more in literacy. Yeah, um, literacy encompasses a lot, you've got to be but... you to read to do that math. Right. Yeah, but there's the outdoor math. There's uh, the, right, like there's and science, music math. math. There's mm -hmm. science so, math. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm I'm not even gonna touch it. I'm gonna stop because this is going on too long. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I believe that wraps up conversation about <laughs> school quality. I was wondering where this was. That's <laughs> what I was thinking that we were not figure. And we are moving on to 5.0 action agenda 5.1 approved hire of a 0 0.42 pre-k teacher. Okay. Yes. So we um, we participated. You have in your packet. Um, there was a, a interview in committee that consisted of parents and community members, um, classroom teacher, students, myself. Um, we interviewed a number of candidates. We had some very strong candidates that we brought forward, had them do a demonstration lesson in the pre-K classroom um, and second round interviews. Um, as I shared with you last month, I'm, I am equally as excited about our new hire and the person we're bringing before you tonight. Um, so it's Robert Reed. Um, they call him Mr. Rob and he has tons of experience teaching pre-k um, he's actually been a leader in his SU and he has traveled around to um, that 
kind of region of the state, providing professional development to teachers around pre-K instruction, integrating literacy and math in pre-K instruction. Um, he just to have it just I'll, I'll just share this so he went into the classroom of students that he will be inheriting next year and one of the students said in this class had had <coughs> three guest teachers and one little boy said to him we hope you come back mm -hmm. and it, that was the only comment like that from a child and he said I really hope I come back too mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty magical mm -hmm. so very That's excited exciting. about it. I think we did our reading recovery training at the same time, oh, but yeah. with different trainers. Huh. I'm pretty sure. And he also <coughs> has a background in special education, was a reading recovery teacher, um, was a coach, so he has a wealth of knowledge beyond just pre-K. That's awesome. So would, Thank you. I would take a motion to apply. I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All Just those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, 6.0. So we're going to have one more. Oh, I forgot to add you one. Accept the resignation. I forgot to add that one. So we probably should have flipped these two, but um, <laughs> as you all know, Beth Downing is going back up to Cal to teach yeah. two sections of pre-K, and you just need to formally approve her resignation. I would take a motion. Do you need one of these? I'll make a motion oh. to accept the resignation of Elizabeth Downs. I'll second it. Any discussion? All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, now I think we're One on. more, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I, um, so I just want to say about Beth, she will be very missed. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, she, I know. Yeah, we should do something, say, she we should. with regret. Yeah, we should thank her for many. She's an incredible yeah, teacher. Her. And she's been here a really long time too. Up at and least on, yeah. Up and on um, for the past So it will be years. a loss to our school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, just to let you know, it's not on here, but on Friday afternoon I received a letter um, that I have for you, but I don't think you need it. Uh, we have a retirement of a paraprofessional. Doris Phillips will be retiring at the end of the school year. Oh. She was here last year. 40 years. I asked her, how long, Dory? 40, and it was a hard decision. I bet. Um, and sh and I, I told her, just like with Mrs. Farnham, she is welcome to come back and sub and mentor <laughs> students, and we don't want to see her gone. And she's, of course, a grandmother of two students yeah. here, so mm -hmm. she won't be gone for good, but she is ready to not be here every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I think we're on to the board order. Well, we have to let Mr. Well, I, I'll make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of eighty thousand four hundred and one dollars and forty one cents. I'll second it. Then I had a question. Um, the very first three checks are issued on the same date to three different organizations, and they're identical of five hundred forty four dollars. And those, those 80 cents. I don't is it split them. up between I three? Let me see that. If we can see who they're written to, we can tell you. Yeah, it probably sounds like a free Is there a pre-K I don't know. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. 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 a pre-K So it's just an equally divided between yeah. three Yeah, it's the same. Remember, it's the same tuition, and mm -hmm. yeah, we have to okay. write the checks that way. Good catch, Stephen. No, but I will not. It just seemed odd. like, what is he? Because there's oh. one more down below. Is there any discussion? Further discussion? Seeing that I'm hearing on all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank Thanks. It's going to pass items. anyway without my signature. There's already <laughs> four. I, I couldn't find anything because there was one more below. Future agenda. Oh, well, our, our own retreat, we're. So they're trying to, one of the things that's going to be discussed on the 30th is whether that will be, that there'll be time in the afternoon. Stephen actually suggested this mm -hmm. at the executive committee that that could happen after the board retreat. Okay. On the second. On the second. On the second. So that will be a future agenda. Well, you'll hear oh. more probably after Thanks. the executive committee meeting okay. on the 30th. Okay. So that's only if we have enough of our representation here. 
that doesn't mean you have to. I think it's one of those things. That you oh, maybe. Oh, my the discussion yeah. executive committee was the day's pretty well shot because you're yeah. doing an SU retreat. Why not just, and the board retreats typically are between two and four hours. So if the SU retreat ended at three or four, the board retreats typically go in the early evening. Why not just do it all, bang it all out in one day? And do we know where the board retreat is? No, no, not yet. They're working on that. It's just a consideration. I do you believe board communication? Is there anything? I think that brings us to adjournment. Yes. Uh, 816.